Today, it's a doubleheader of college football excitement. Now, from the live music capital of the world, Austin, Texas, the Red Raiders of Texas Tech lock horns with the 10th-ranked Texas Longhorn. Major Applewhite and the Horns sit on top of the conference. A Texas Tech victory puts these arch rivals in a neck-and-neck -neck tie. It's a Texas tradition of hard hit. Then, the Beavers are bowl-bound. The Wildcats have knocked Oregon State's teeth in eight times in a row. This may get ugly. Wildcats and Beavers run wild in a Pac-10 dogfight. But now, hold on, partner. The eyes of Texas are upon you as Texas Tech and Texas kick off next on Fox Sports Net. Perfect evening for a Texas size shootout, and 83,000 have come to Austin, Texas for a Big 12 showdown that could decide the Big 12 South. From Darrell K. Royal, Texas Memorial Stadium, the number 10 Texas Longhorns are playing host to the Red Raiders of Texas Tech. And the importance of this game is evident in the standings. A win by Texas clinches a spot in the Big 12 championship game. A win by Texas Tech tonight and next week will put them in San Antonio three weeks from tonight. Hello again, everybody. Along with Artie Gigantino, I'm Ron Thulin. And Artie, history is repeating itself. Last year, Texas was in the same position with a chance to clinch. Texas Tech upset them. Both teams now have a shot at the title, and both are led by quarterbacks that need to be hot tonight. And you know, they're both hot during this year, but they're both very different. Major Applewhite has thrown 18 touchdown passes for the University of Texas. He's a little guy. He doesn't have a great arm, but he completes a lot of passes, and he can throw the deep ball. Rob Peters from Texas Tech has thrown nine touchdown passes. He's a big, strong guy that can really throw the ball down the middle of the field. And last year, he was hot against the University of Texas defense. It should be an interesting matchup. That's right. Peters had a career day, and this series has been tight. In fact, the last 14 meetings between these two teams. Each team has won seven, but there's more than a championship at stake. It's bragging rights in the state of Texas. The Raiders and the Longhorns straight ahead. And Texas has touched the Longhorns in the locker room. They've touched Freddie Steinmark's picture and they take to the field as they're set to do battle with the Red Raiders of Texas Tech. We'd like to update you on a score some of you have been watching in Conference USA. East Carolina leading Cincinnati 48-26 with just over a minute left. And of course, we will keep you posted on that score. It has been a great year of Big 12 football. Our Eric Clemens has a recap. Eric? Well, Ron, this fourth season of Big 12 play has produced plenty of solid teams, some good stories, and some great action on the field here in 1999. Let's start with Baylor, where things got off on a really bad foot against UNLV. Final play of the game, up by three. Daryl Bush fumbles. Kevin Thomas brought it back all the way. An omen of struggles to come this season for the Baylor Bears. The Kansas State, where David Allen is a star for the return teams, he leads the conference in punt return average. His presence has spearheaded an impressive start without star quarterback Michael Bishop, who is graduating. Now on to Nebraska, where Frank Solich and Eric Crouch are all smiles. Bobby Newcomb volunteered to give up his battles with Crouch for the quarterback spot, and his move to wing back and return specialist has paid huge dividends, like this game-winning catch earlier in the season against Kansas. Bob Stoops has led Oklahoma back with junior college transfer Josh Heupel, quarterback in the offense. His 25 touchdown passes leads a resurgent offensive attack, which does most of its damage through the air instead of on the ground, which is Oklahoma's previous history. And Texas had its third straight victory over Nebraska. Major Applewhite led the comeback kids with his game-winning touchdown toss to Mike Jones. And this was supposed to be a rebuilding year for the Longhorns. Texas currently ranked 11th in the BCS standings with a win they should move into the top 10 that's because number two Tennessee and number seven Penn State have already lost in games played earlier today and of course coach Mac Brown is concentrating on the Big 12 South Championship which he gets with a win over a tough Texas Tech team tonight Ron 
All right, Eric. Mac Brown was hoping for seven wins this year. He's done much better, and his game plan looks like this. What they're going to do tonight, the University of Texas offense, is try to get their playmakers, Hodges Mitchell, Kwame Cavill, in space, and then make a big play. They've got to be patient on offense because Tech is abnormal on defense, and they got to blitz the quarterback, Peters, from Texas Tech. And for Spike Dykes. Well, the first thing that Spike and his coaches talked to us about, they got to protect the quarterback, Peter. They cannot let him get sacked. They got to keep moving the chains. They got to keep the Texas offense off the field, and they got to apply major pressure on Major Applewhite, and they're going to come after him, especially on third down. Well, Spike was an assistant coach here under the great Darrell Royal. He has a lot of great memories. Chris Stockton set to kick it away for Texas. John Norman and Ricky Hunter back for the Red Raiders of Texas Tech. A must-win situation for both, and we're glad you're with us. This is going to be a shootout tonight. Line drive kick. Norman. Reverse to Hunter. Oh, he kept it, I would say. Norman kept it. Fake the reverse. Texas didn't buy it. We did. And there is Rob Peters, the quarterback of the Red Raiders of Texas Tech. From Katy, Texas, the senior is a warrior. Last year, he threw for a career-high 322 yards. He was knocked down on numerous occasions and just kept getting up and firing away. And Mac Brown knows you cannot allow Rob Peters to get hot in this football game. He's big. He's strong, he's athletic, and he's a great basketball player. And he's also very, very smart. Peters keeps it. Little play action pass. Complete first down for the Red Raiders up to Tim Wynn, the tight end. Number 91. And the Texas Tech line looks like this. Jonathan Gray, they call him the house. 33 consecutive starts at tackle for the junior out of Lubbock, Texas. And at running back, we'll keep an eye on Sean Williams. He set a refreshment rushing record with 230 yards versus Colorado. Had 148 yards last week versus Iowa State. Not surprising, we saw play action by Peters. Now he runs the option. Williams. He is going to be dragged down after a pickup of about two on the play. And the Texas defense, number 13 overall in the NCAA. They are an attacking defense. And Aaron Humphrey from Lubbock, Texas. His dad works at Texas Tech. He's part of that great defensive line of the Longhorns. And DeAndre Lewis at linebacker. He's a converted fullback. Out of the secondary, Greg Brown, the oldest player in the secondary. They've had an injury problem back there. But Brown has stepped up, and because of that, the secondary is better. The numbers on Brown this season. After a pickup of three, second and seven, Peters out of the flat, caught and immediately dropped. Irvis Hill was right there to make the stop on D. Jackson. And Peters went down. He paid the price. And you're going to see Texas blitz Rob Peters in every passing opportunity this evening. And they want to knock him down to the ground like they do on this particular play after he releases the ball. Look for blitzes from the guys in the orange shirts tonight. Well, we saw Texas blitz with their corners last week. See if they do it tonight. On third and three, here they come. Peters gets it away. First down up to the 47-yard line to D. Jackson, the junior out of San Antonio, Texas, and Peters is down. Boy, oh, he looks, look at the eyes, he looks stunned. That looks like Troy Aikman. Rob Peters, as you said before, Ron, has been injured throughout his career. He's a big guy. He's a big target. He's six foot three, six foot four. And I'll tell you, when you get a linebacker running in to hit him, he comes down hard. Now, Spike Dykes saw this man take so many shots last year. Now it looks like he's holding his right arm, but we're not going to speculate on the condition of Rob Peters. And, and what Texas did that time, they brought some pressure up inside. And one of the things they want to do against Peters, because he's not a real mobile guy, is blitz him inside. You're going to look here, right through the eyes. Number 59, Sanders goes to the left, and De DeAndre Lewis comes right up the middle, number four, the middle linebacker. He makes the sack, but I'll tell you, there's a couple other orange shirts there that makes the hit that knocks Peters down. That was not a blown assignment by the center, Kyle Sanders. The back was supposed to pick up number four, DeAndre Lewis. Oh, well, there's Cliff Kingsbury, the redshirt freshman out of New Braunfels, Texas, which is just down the road on I-35 from Austin. And he has been injured. He had a cast on his thumb. And 
Peters is getting up, but he looks a little woozy, and it looks like Cliff Kingsbury, who has had to sit out the last couple of games, might get a call at least for a couple of plays till the cobwebs get, get out of the head of Rob Peters. And, it, and yesterday in practice, if you look at his left thumb, he still has got what they call a soft cast on his left thumb. Well, like Dyke said, Cliff Kingsbury is a study in perpetual motion. This young man loves the game of football, and Texas Tech jumps off sides quickly. And, Ron, that happens a lot with the new quarterback coming in because the wide receiver that time, Tim Baker, number 81, was not used to the cadence of a new quarterback. Dead ball. Then he jumped. Ball start. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Repeat first down. Steve Juszczyk, our referee this evening. He'll be making all the calls. There is Tim Baker, the junior out of Borger, Texas, number 81. He's a big one at 6'5", and Clinsbury no slouch himself at 6'4". Kingsbury has a great arm, and he's an excellent athlete. They're going to keep it on the ground with that big defensive line of Texas. Absolutely nothing doing. That still looked like he had problems with the snap. Yeah, he? he did, and again, they just got to get himself into the rhythm. But running up inside against that great Texas defense, it's hard to get into a rhythm. You saw Casey Hampton, number 64, make the play. Now, going back to Kingsbury a little bit here, Ron, he's kind of a gunslinger. You know, he's a guy, like you said, in perpetual motion, kind of a guy that just likes to play sandlot football all the time. He's a coach's son, but he's a young gunslinger without a lot of experience. Takes a three-step drop, throws it up for nobody in particular, except if you're wearing an orange jersey on the Texas bench. Kendrick Hill from that right quarterback spot put the pressure on. There you see Peters. I think he probably hears two or three phones ringing and not sure which one to answer right now. That has become such a topic of discussion this year with obviously Steve Young in the NFL and Troy Aikman just up the road in Dallas with the concussions and everybody's careful about it now. With all the blitzes that go on on defenses today, it's very, very hard to protect the quarterback from getting hit. Texas only allows 28% success rate on third down. They're blitzing again, and Cliff Kingsbury is going down. Back to the 30-yard line. Sean Rogers with the sack, his sixth of the year. Texas Tech lined up in a non-tight end formation. So you got the five linemen and one back against six or possibly seven defenders. They initially did a good job, but they couldn't hold them off for long. A good call that time by Carl Reese, the defensive coordinator from the University of Texas. And Spike Dyke knows he's going to get pressure tonight. Courtney Garcia waiting the punt. Backs up to his 27-yard line, calling the fair catch, and they'll mark it at the 25. Texas had nine sacks last week. They've got one tonight. The kick of 44 yards, and there is the quarterback for the University of Texas. The much-talked-about Major Applewhite. The offense of Texas, number one in the Big 12. Applewhite, 20 straight games, over 200 yards, passing the football. And the best way to describe him is a coach on the field. He's not pretty. He's a guy that doesn't have a great arm, except the ball gets to exactly where it's supposed to be. He throws three quarters, but the ball comes out with great velocity. The coaches at Texas love Major Applewhite as their quarterback. Well, they're 50-50 on first down. Running pass. Let's see how the Longhorns open things up. And they'll put it up. A quick look here to Kwame Cavill. We're going to be calling his name a lot tonight as he makes his way up to about the 29-yard line. And the Texas offensive line is led by their junior left tackle, Leonard Davis. He is 6'6", 367 pounds, the biggest offensive line in Texas history. And there's Kwame Cavill, the top receiver in the Big 12, number six in the NCAA. He's a Blitnikoff semifinalist, and he has as many catches as the entire Nebraska team coming in today. Not too bad. On second and six, a little draw. Keeping it on the ground, the left side, the legs keep moving, and moving his way up to the 35-yard line is Hodges Mitchell, the junior out of Dallas, Texas. And the Texas Tech defense, number 25 in the NCAA, but their excellent pass defensive-wise, Taurus Rucker, the inspirational leader, six sacks on the line, Tim Duffy, an inside linebacker, second on the team in tackles and the secondary will be calling his name a lot Kevin Curtis he's the leading tackler in the Big 12 and the former quarterback is only a sophomore and has averaged 18 tackles a game the last four contests 
Mitchell and Brown in the backfield, and we've got people jumping around. Applewhite came up to the line of scrimmage that time and had a long, non-rhythmic count, which drew the Texas Tech defensive front offsides. If you can't run it at them sometimes, the best way to get the first Offside. down is to trick them. Defense, five-yard penalty, first down. Now watch, it's a, it's a voice in front. He's going to go, hut, hut. You see, when he moves his head like that, he is really shouting. And the center did a great job because when he saw a defensive man from Texas Tech jump off sides, he snapped the ball. Good, good communication between the center and the quarterback. Center Matt Anderson, the sophomore out of Quero, Texas, which is a great high school here in the state of Texas. Mitchell try on the right side. He's able to make his way up to the 45-yard line. Mitchell, the junior out of Skyline High School in Dallas, Texas. And just think, Artie, just after the Rutgers game, the coaching staff at Texas thought he might just be a third down back. They said he just wasn't cutting it up to that point. But they had a talk with him, and they told him to move back from seven yards in his alignment to eight yards so he had a better opportunity to see the holes open up and that's exactly what has been the secret to his success you look at him right here see how deep he is he's about eight yards deep in the backfield helps him see apple white will put it up has a man open the pass is caught and dropped right into the hands of ryan nunez but let's get an update on rob peters with eric clemens eric all right ron rob peters is getting his right elbow iced right now he has a bruised right elbow but of course you know him this guy from games past when he's been beat up it takes a lot more than that to knock him out of the game he is expected to return ron eric i remember the three of us talking about rob last year saying rob stay down don't get up it was like you know, like Randall Tex Cobb fighting Muhammad Ali or something. You wanted them to stay down. Third down and four with Cavill in motion. They put the pressure on. Cavill has the catch right at the yardage marker. Anthony Malbro, the senior out of Beaumont, Texas, comes up with a stop. But it's not enough because that's a first down for the Longhorns. You're going to see great non-verbal communication between Ma Major Applewhite and this man right here, Cavill. Watch him go inside and catch the pass. They know what's happened. Cavill stutter steps, he waits, he hesitates, and he goes to the open area inside. They have great, great visual communication, non-verbal communication between themselves. Applewhite, a little play action is being chased, throws it out of the flat. The pass is complete again to Cavill, the all-time leading receiver in Texas history, shattering McGarrity's record from last year. Brian Giddens, the left corner out of Tyler, Texas on the stop. One of the things that sets up the receptions for Cavill is the great ball handling by Major Applewhite. That time Applewhite bootlegged out to his right and was able to throw the ball to Cavill and get his 77th reception of the year. These two are a deadly combination for all foes here in the Big 12. And it starts with number 11. Big time. Second down and four for the Longhorns. They keep it on the ground. Hodges Mitchell with a little running room. He blasts his way over the 40, down to the 36-yard line. Kevin Curtis, the junior out of Lubbock, Texas, on the stop. Kevin Curtis is a free safety. They want to have him involved in the run as well as the pass. That's a great example of his ability to tackle people in the open field. The big guy out of Lubbock, 6'2", 209, is going to be an All-American for the Red Raiders before his career is over. In fact, he's played like an All-American, especially the second half of this year. Prior to last year, he didn't play a whole lot of defense since 96, since his sophomore year of high school. Applewhite again in the flat, and another first down. Complete to Ryan Nunez, the senior out of Westlake High School, right here in Austin, Texas. What a deadly combination when you have Nunez and Kwame Cavill. What is happening now with the receivers like Nunez and like a Cavill? Because Texas Tech has eight men around the line of scrimmage, there's some seams. And in that particular defense, they were playing inside leverage. The corner was, so Nunez ran and out. It was excellent timing, but also recognition by Applewhite to throw the ball to quote the dead area. 
Five times this year, the Longhorns have scored on their first possession. Greg Davis says his record is six, the offensive coordinator. This time, the Red Raider defense is there to meet him. Ricky Brown, not much running room at all. Zero, in fact. Jonathan Hawkins, number 47, makes the play. An interesting story is Hawkins. He was in the fullback. He started 15 games for Tech at the fullback position the last two years. They moved him over to linebacker this spring. He's done a great job. It was an easy transition because basically the fullback is like a linebacker on offense anyway. So the transition was easy for him. This is the 10th play of the drive for the Longhorns. Second down and 10, closing in on seven and a half left to play in quarter number one. Again, Texas picks up the pressure, wide open, passes complete to Flowers, touchdown Texas. That's number six for Greg Davis, the offensive right. coordinator. Six times this year, well, they scored a touchdown on the opening drive based on the script that they prepared all week in practice. Well, and Texas has won 14, or 13 of 14 games in which they have scored first while Mac Brown has been head coach here. They're going to try to make it 14 out of 15 tonight. The extra point by Stockton is good. 30 consecutive extra points for Chris Stockton, and the Longhorns have taken a lead with 7.26 to play. The touchdown pass going for 25 yards. But again, it started with Major Applewhite with his 19th touchdown pass of the year. Flowers with his fourth reception for a touchdown. We'd like to welcome those of you who have been watching East Carolina in Cincinnati. East Carolina, the victor in that ball game. Once again, 48-34. You're at Darrell K. Royal Texas Memorial Stadium, a sellout crowd of over 83,000 on hand for a Big 12 showdown. Along with Eric Clemens and Artie Gigantino, I'm Ron Thulin, and Texas has just scored on this. Applewhite does an excellent job of waiting, 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 and he finds Flowers running away from the coverage. But again, when you get this much time, watch how much time Applewhite has. When you have that much time, you're going to win as a quarterback. You're going to see Flowers up at the top. He makes a move to the inside, breaks back out to the outside. Excellent pass, excellent run after the catch. Touchdown. You know, you look at Flowers, the big sophomore, he ran a 10-1, 100 meters in high school. Now, I'm not real smart, but that's fast. He's a fast football player. And the coaches were worried about his size because he's only 5'9", but he runs so fast, he makes up for any lack of height. A high kick from the two. Ricky Hunter. Trying to find some running room. Plus crosses the 10, and he is going to be dumped at the 12-yard line. And the Texas defense again will take the field, and the Red Raider offense will come back on. I'll tell you, Ron, the Texas kickoff coverage team is running down the field like a bunch of people possessed. They've done a great job of covering kicks the last couple weeks. Now the Texas defense put on the pressure right off the bat. Rob Peters, of course, down. You know, he, Peters threw three passes in that opening drive and gets knocked down to the ground. And then Kingsbury comes in, and guess what? Hello, same thing. Here we go. Let's blitz him. Now they keep it on the ground, trying that left side, maybe picking up about two yards on the play is again Shad Williams. And we have to talk about Sammy Morris and Shad Williams. Sammy Morris, of course, number five, the senior out of San Antonio, Texas. But we see Morris right there, and when we had the Texas A&M game, they were so excited because he was splitting his time with Williams, a tailback. Now he's essentially a fullback because they lost Kyle Allen on the tight end, who was also playing some football. Right, so you're going to see, because of that and because of the injuries, a lot of different formations tonight from Texas Tech's offense. Guys are going to be all over the place. Texas bouncing around on defense. Kingsbury, pass, drop. Incomplete, intended for Tim Wynn, the big tight end. Wynn was a starter back in 1997, came on as a walk-on for Texas Tech. But again, Cliff Kingsbury taking a hit from the guys in the burnt orange. When you look at Texas's defense, think pressure. All they do is attack. Aaron Humphrey that time jumps over a blocker, goes through the air, and just knocks Kingsbury down. 
Wow, what a good defensive play oh. by a defensive end. Aaron Humphrey out of Lubbock, Texas, as you said before. He detonated him, didn't he? And there's Spike Dykes and Mac Brown. And you look at the Longhorns, they have really improved. When you look at the total defense in 1997, 85th, to where they are today, they've done a wonderful job of improving this group. Penalty flag is thrown, third and eight. Kingsbury throwing it up for grabs. It'll be incomplete. I think he thought he had a free play. D. Jackson is coming up the field. He'll talk it over. You know, you look at Kingsbury and you say, well, he's a little out of rhythm. But one of the reasons he's out of rhythm, he's been hurt for four weeks. He hasn't practiced for four weeks. Mm -hmm. Then all of a sudden he's okay to play this week. And he doesn't get half the snaps with the first team. The first team quarterback, Peters, gets about 80% of the snaps. In motion. On the offense. Well, the motion was on D. Jackson. He went in motion and started upfield just a little too quickly. Nick Winder going to talk to the quarterback, put Kingsbury on the sideline, and Texas Tech's going to have to kick it away. Look for Texas to come after him here. They've got eight guys on the line of scrimmage. They're moving around. Eric Rosilla standing on his goal line. The left-footed kicker gets away a nice high spiral. Back it up, Garcia. Courtney Garcia is dumped immediately. Great punt, excellent coverage by Texas Tech. Antoine Alexander down to make the stop. But Cliff Kingsbury and Rob Peters are feeling the wrath of the Longhorns in Texas lead by a touchdown. College football Saturday at Fox Sports Net is brought to you by Subway, the way a sandwich should be. And by the people inspired to build vehicles for your mind and heart. Nissan. Driven. That is the UT Tower that they bathe in orange lights when the Longhorns win a conference championship. They're, of course, a national title. And right now, Texas leading Texas Tech 7-0. We're in the first quarter. Texas wins. They will be in San Antonio on December 4th for the Big 12 championship game against Nebraska. Applewhite scrambling to the 40. He takes a dive at about the 42-yard line. And for our first Dr. Pepper game break, let's send it to our college football Saturday studios at Kevin Frazier. Guys, Wisconsin and Iowa, and this is the record-breaking run for Ron Dane as he run, surpasses run, run. Ricky Williams as the all-time leading rusher New in York NCAA history. I'll meet you there. 6,397 yards, and already there's room on Kellen's bandwagon for you. Well, it didn't take the great Dane very long to break the record, did he? Well, Kellen Winslow was right. He's going to win the Heisman Trophy. Put his name on it right now. It's all over but the cry. And Hodges Mitchell on the carry gets the first down for Texas. Hodges Mitchell just five foot seven, had an 80-yard touchdown play, the first play of the game last week. He is the first Texas running back to have 1,000 yards rushing and 300 receiving. And that is impressive when you yeah. consider who is here. Yeah, but he's a short, explosive, quick, shifty runner. And all those things allow him to be very dangerous when he gets into the open field. Now they've taken Rob Peters to the locker room for x-rays, a Texas Tech quarterback. And Eric, I'm sure we'll have an update on that when it becomes available. Nice job by the Texas Tech defense. This time, Mitchells is tripped up by Keith Cockrum, the junior out of Gold Plate, Texas. He is a classic overachiever, and if you describe blue-collar worker, I think that would have to be number 20. And that time, he blitzed off the corner. Not bad for an ex-All-State quarterback coming off the corner, but he's smart, and he knows exactly what to do in this sort of abnormal defensive front that Texas Tech runs. They run a true 4-4. You're going to see four down linemen and four linebacker types in there with two corners and a free safety. It's a 4-4 defense. Cavill in motion. Applewhite with plenty of time, and the pass is complete up to the 45, down to the 42-yard line. Again, it is Ryan Nunez with John Norman on the coverage. Applewhite is just assaulting that left side of the Texas Tech defense. Well, he's accurate, and he knows where to throw all the time. Now, one of the problems in this scheme is you don't get a hit on wide receivers. And wide receivers like Nunez that come down the field without getting touched can find the pockets in which to turn into. That was a great example of that, of the wide receiver not getting hit, running down the field, and being able to run the perfect pattern. I like what Kwame Cavill calls Applewhite, calls him major, cool, and calm. And we saw it there, despite the pressure. 
First and ten again for the Longhorns. Out in the flat again, attacking the left Double side of that pass. Texas Tech Complete defense. The, the tight end, Mike Jones, a sophomore out of San Antonio, he Texas, who was a backup defensive end last year. And the numbers on Applewhite, impressive so far. He's Kevin smart. Also he knows where to throw the football. This young man spends a tremendous amount of time in the film room by himself preparing and studying and dissecting defenses. He knows it as good as the coaches. And that's from Greg Davis, the offensive coordinator, who in my view is a great coach, says this guy knows the offense as good as any of us. And you'll love that in your quarterback. A second and eight, a little draw again to Mitchell. Texas Tech just right there to swarm him over at about the 35-yard line. Applewhite out of Baton Rouge, Louisiana, named, of course, for Major Ogilvy. You know, he's a coach on the field. That's what the coaches love about him. His arm release, when he releases the ball, it doesn't come over the top. It comes through the side. But he can throw the ball very, very well deep. But the last thing about him, look at that face. He's a wolf in sheep's clothing. Don't let his looks fool you. This guy is a great college football quarterback, even though he doesn't shave yet. <laughs> And it's third down and four. Texas Tech showing a lot on the line of scrimmage, and here they come. Applewhite gets it away, and the pass is complete. Great pressure by Jonathan Hawkins from that inside linebacker spot. The junior out of Wichita Falls, Texas. Lemons also in on that, but just that Texas Tech defense that prides themselves on bending but not breaking. You know what, though? They're, they're breaking into the backfield tonight because we're seeing a bunch of hits on both quarterbacks. You're going to see Hawkins come into your picture right there and knock Applewhite right to the ground as he releases the football. One other thing about Applewhite, he's tough. When a guy like Hawkins is running full speed at you and knocks you down, you feel it. Fourth down, and the Longhorns are going for it. Three to snap it. Pressure again. Pass is tipped away. Incomplete. No penalty flag thrown, and Texas Tech is held. Great job defensively by the Red Raiders. Kevin Curtis in on the play. That was a big-time stand by Texas Tech. Kevin Curtis is the ninth man around the line of scrimmage and run, but also a robber type against the pass. Good example of him being a destructive force in the middle. Sixty-one-year-old Spike Dykes, beginning his 13th full year at Texas Tech. His first college job was an assistant right here in Austin back in 1972 as an assistant with Darrell Royal. Been under a lot of pressure this year. Texas Tech is going to try to run the ball against the Longhorns and nothing doing. They string it out effectively, and Shad Williams could not find any running room whatsoever. And Ahmad Brooks, number five, five foot eight, 182 pounds, a sophomore out of Abilene, came up and made a great play. The corners are very young for Texas, but very athletic. Yards per play so far, 5.6 for Texas, 2.6 for Texas Tech. Watch Texas Tech and how fast they come out of the huddle. They get lined up in a line of scrimmage. They want to get up there and snap the ball and run a play. They don't do it this time because they're audible. Morris is in motion. Little play action pass. Nice time. Kingsbury has a man. The pass is incomplete. Penalty flag will be thrown. Intended for Daryl Jones, a sophomore out of Lubbock, Texas. And Kingsbury is down. We've already lost Rob Peters, the starting quarterback of Texas Tech. He's in the locker room getting his elbow x-rayed. And now Kingsbury a little groggy getting up. The interference was a big play, but the hit on this young man was even bigger. When a quarterback delivers the football, he's exposed. There is no protection for him when he winds up and throws and whack. Guess who? Number 49, Aaron Humphrey, just levels them again. The quarterback is not protected when he releases the football. Humphrey's been in Texas Tech's backfield more than Sammy Morris. Well, I like him. You know, he's got 22 career sacks. This year he's got eight, 12 tackles for a loss. You know, he, I talked to him a little bit of practice the other day, and he kind of growls at you. You know, he's not a real chatty guy with the media, <laughs> so to speak. He, he kind of grunted at me a few times, and I said, good luck to you. But he wasn't practicing this week because he had a pelvic muscle pull. But he doesn't look like Whatever. there's anything wrong with him tonight. Well, it's first and ten on the 48. Penalty flag again thrown. That's going to be motion against Texas Tech. And that'll back him up even more. 
you know, Ron, the environment here. It's loud. It's noisy. Obviously, most people here are rooting Dead for the ball. long ones. False start. Offense. Five-yard penalty. It makes it tough for a quarterback to come to the line of scrimmage. Absolutely. Well, tomorrow at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 Pacific, it's the NFL this morning. Host Chris Myers is joined by All-Pro Jackie Slater, coach, former coach of the year Marv Levy, and four-time All-Pro Chris Spielman. And this week's very special guest is Brett Favre. That's the NFL this morning, tomorrow at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 Pacific, on Fox Sports Net. Kingsbury hit again as he throws and is almost caught. But again, Kingsbury is down. My goodness, just put a big red X on a Texas Tech quarterback. Talk about pinning your ears back and just letting it fly. Rick Dykes might want to consider going to some three-step drop here or some shotgun to save his quarterback because if the quarterback's got to go back five and six mm. and he's holding on to the football because he's trying to make the perfect read, he is a target. And the quarterback just can't take that type of beating. So Spike, I'm sure, is talking to his son Rick about, hey, maybe let's get some three-step here. And yeah, they've had four quarterback pressures already. This time they try a draw. John Williams with some running room. Penalty flag is thrown Number right 35. at the 45-yard line. Aaron Humphrey finally chasing him down, but we had a penalty flag right after Shaw turned the corner. And Texas Tech shooting themselves in the foot again. When you're an interior player, a guard or a center, and you're playing against those inside guys of Texas who are very quick and mobile, sometimes you hold. Now, Number 79, Jonathan Gray, right there, right there. Look at Big Jonathan's left arm. He's right there on number 50, Cedric Woodard. That is a 15-yard foul. A good call that time by the officials. Four penalties are ready for Tech as we look at Jonathan Gray, who's the nephew of Jerry Gray, who I coached at the Los Angeles Rams and is now the defensive backfield coach for the Tennessee Titans. I think people here in Texas remember Johnny Gray just a little bit. Jerry Gray, an All-American here at the University of Texas from Lubbock. Spike was not happy when he, no, went, <laughs> when he left and went to Texas, just like Aaron Humphrey left Lubbock and went to Texas. Hell, it's second down, and you can go almost to Lubbock to get the first. Second and 28. Three wide receivers to the right for Tech. Texas now with five on the line of scrimmage, and they're blitzing. Kingsbury keeps it, leans forward. Up to about the 37-yard line, DeAndre Lewis, the sophomore out of Houston, holding on. And he is the man that got the honor of replacing Dusty Renfro, who graduated. Renfro was such a blue-collar worker and the heart and soul of this defense. And now it goes to this young man. And one thing that stands out, I think, Artie, when you look at Texas's defense, my goodness, they're young. And they're fast. And they, they've made some good moves, like Lewis, moving them from outside backer to inside backer. You know, I, I, I love strong, big, tough inside linebackers, but I also love fast ones. And Mac Brown felt very strongly he needed a speed person, a speed player at the Mike linebacker. And that's what he gets with number four, Lewis. Tech just gets the playoff. Kingsbury again, and he takes a hit, loses the football. I don't think it's going to be a play. The play clock was down to zero just about a half a second before he snapped it. The penalty flag was thrown, so that won't be a play. So all that was was field day is Peters now. They're looking at his x-ray. You can see the doctor of Texas Tech showing them the little film on it. That's the kind of film a quarterback doesn't want to look at. Repeat third down. That is a great shot by our camera crew of showing the x-rays. Now, can you read them, Ron? I'd say that he's hurt. <laughs> I'm just going to go out on a limb. Well, I'd say he's hurt by the, the, the facial expressions by him and the doctor. Yeah. You know, there's not a lot of happiness over there. Well, he hasn't put his helmet on yet. Yeah. Spike Dykes now is going to have to go into his bag of tricks because they move the chains back some more, and they're going to even add more time on the clock. And it'll be third down and... Just about 25. No, we're going to call it 30 now. Third down and 30. One thing about Texas Tech and Spike Dykes, they are resilient. Absolutely. They are resilient. They got off to a tough start this year. They bounced back. This is a resilient football team that is led by a resilient head football coach. It is loud at Darrell K. Royal Texas Memorial Stadium. Again, Texas blitzing. Kingsbury throwing it up, and it is incomplete. Stepping out of bounds is D. Jackson. He made the catch, didn't get the foot down. You see, Ron, that's the three-step drop I was talking about. The, the blitzers cannot get there. 
You take three steps, you let the ball, you fling it up the field. Now you're going to watch that Jackson, number 85, he pushed off. Good call, though, by the officials. He was clearly out of bounds. Peters is getting the right elbow. You know what? He might be coming back in the yeah, football. That's what it looks like to me. Put a little pad on yep. that elbow and let's go. He is one of the toughest college football players I have ever seen in my 25 years. After last year and the shots he took at A&M this year. The last putt was 49 yards and this is another boomer. Courtney Garcia backing up. Didn't call a fair catch and they're going to throw the penalty flag at the 20 yard line. And I'm not so sure I like that call because he didn't call a fair catch. To me, it's you make the catch, you're open game. I know that. You know what? But even with that, the halo rule, I believe he was not within two yards. That was just a great defensive play Absolutely. by the gunner on the outside. I agree. I mean, one thing if the guy makes the fair catch, but uh, to try to slow up when you're running full speed, they may disregard this. And they should. I think they're. I think they should too. All right. block into the halo. Great job by the officiating crew, as we pointed out. You think he was listening to us? Well, Rob Peters is warming up, and that's got to be good news for Red Raider fans. Right now, Texas leading Texas Tech. I have touched down. We'll be back. We choose not to sleep. We choose instead to explore. We choose to invent, to discover, to cure, to lead. We choose not to sleep. Make some coffee. We're Texas. Well, Rob Peters had his right elbow wrapped up. He didn't like it. He took the wrapping off. Then he's trying to warm up, and you can see him grimacing every time he throws the football. And then they're bringing another wrap over, maybe for that right elbow. But obviously, this guy wants to get back into the football game. Texas with the ball on their own 20-yard line, first and 10. 15 seconds left to play in quarter number one. To the tight end, Mike Jones, and he is going to be dragged down. That was an audible that time, Ron, at the line of scrimmage. Applewhite saw something in the coverage, an audible to an arrow pattern to Mike Jones in the flat. That was an audible that credit should go to Major Applewhite to make the right decision. Now somebody should tell him that Jeremy Jones probably is not going to play tonight. He's injured. That's okay. He's still the man. Now look here now. You're going to see Mitchell. He's lined up eight yards deep in the backfield. That gives him a chance to see the hole develop a lot quicker. Does he take advantage of it? Yes, he does. High stepping his way up to the 39-yard line for Hodges Mitchell. A pickup of 14 on the play. Reagan bounds on the stop. And that's the way the first quarter will come to an end. Well, he got two seconds left. May have another play. That's an example of it, Ron, of him being able to see the hole develop and open up and make a decision while he's still in the backfield. Well, that will be the last play of the first quarter. Major Applewhite has thrown a touchdown pass for Texas, and the Longhorns lead Tech by a touchdown. Now just Mitchell spent the last couple of years as the backup to Ricky Williams. Now he is the man, and he showed why on the last play of the quarter. He struggled, like you said, earlier in the year. The coaches moved him back to eight yards. Now the reason he's there is so when he gets started on his own play here, he's got time right there to see the hole open up. That's a great example of it because he's able to make the decision where to go two yards from the line of scrimmage. Vision. Vision is a running back's best friend, besides being fast. Yeah, besides being, yeah having an under 4-5 speed yeah. does help. First and 10 from the 39, Applewhite thrown again. Complete the Kwame Cavill, he high steps over one, gets up to the 48-yard line, and that is the athletic ability of Kwame Cavill and his 41-inch vertical leap. Well, one time he was considering a basketball scholarship to the University of Houston. You look at Major Applewhite getting the signal from the sidelines. Here's a guy, before he came to the University of Texas out of Baton Rouge, Louisiana, went to 25 different summer football camps. He wanted to be as smart and as prepared as he could possibly be before he went to college. Originally thought he would end up at Texas A&M. Again, Mitchell blowing through the hole, and he is going to be dragged down. 
at the 43-yard line for a Dr. Pepper game break. Here's Kevin Frazier. Guys, no contest between Nebraska and Kansas State this afternoon. Eric Crouch, 18-yard touchdown run. He ran for 158 yards and two touchdowns in Kansas State, no longer unbeaten, and I'm sure they're fading out of the BCS picture. Yeah, you know what, whenever, Kevin? Now, Texas, if they win this football game, they're going to have to play Nebraska again. <laughs> and I don't think they're real pleased with that. No, it'll be a great football game, but you got to take your hat off to Frank Solich and his coaching staff. Did a great job today. Major Applewhite looking for Pater. Kwame Cavill is there, but the pass is just out of his reach. Antoine Alexander, the junior out of Midland, Texas, on the coverage. At least once a quarter, sometimes twice a quarter, the Texas offense will throw the ball deep down the field to Cavill. Now let's update you on the Big 12 North standings, and now Nebraska obviously taking over the lead in the standings, both with 6-1 and one records, but the head-to-head -head matchup, it is all Nebraska. Colorado a winner today. Kansas lost today, as did Iowa State. Missouri got thumped by A&M. And those are the updated standings in the Big 12 North. And Nebraska's got a battle on their hands next week in Boulder. Two weeks from now in Boulder. That'll end their season. If they win it, they're going to San Antonio. Monstro Flowers on the reception. The young sophomore out of Dallas, Texas, who was a running back in high school. Also runs a little bit of track. He's a 60-yard sprinter for the Texas track team. The Texas men and women, great track teams. Pick up a 10 on that play. You think of Texas, you think of running the football, a little bit like you used to think of Oklahoma, but make no mistake about it, the University of Texas wants to throw the football as much as they want to run the football, and they do a wonderful job of throwing the ball. Mitchell, left side, gets one block and just slipped right at the 36-yard line. Of course, if you just joined us, Rob Peters of Texas Tech was knocked out early in the game. Eric Clemens, how about an update on his condition? Well, obviously, he went to the Texas dressing room, had x-rays. They proved negative, and you guys uh, updated the story very well with pictures as well. He threw on the sideline with tape and a pad over the elbow. That wasn't very comfortable. So he went to kind of a foam elbow covering type pad. He told his offense he's okay. Expect Rob Peters to be back next series, guys. That's good news for the Red Raiders, obviously. Mitchell goes in motion. Texas Tech with six on the line of scrimmage, and here they all come. Wide open across the middle is Kwame Cavill. First down for the Longhorns inside the 20. Talk about reading the defense. Hats off to number 11. Pickup of 18 on the play. They wanted to spread the defense out. Now watch Cavill. We talked about getting the playmakers in space. Cavill's in a slot. Marlboro number seven has got loose man coverage on him. There's no way you could cover him one-on-one -on -one with that much cushion. Playmakers in space is what Greg Davis told us he wanted to do. And that was an example of it. And that's a beautiful play by the Texas Tech's defense. Kyle Shipley, the senior out of Arlington, Texas. Mitchell looked like he had a step on Shipley. The former tight end in high school, but, boy, this guy's coming off a 13-tackle performance against Iowa State last week. He is very, very solid at that linebacker spot. And he's their second-year captain. It's his second year being a captain. He makes all the line of scrimmage checks. He's like a coach on the field. And the coaches like, think he's like Zach Thomas. Yep. Maybe not as quite productive. And he's not saying he's going to go on to be a great player in the NFL. But for Texas Tech's defense, he's very much like Zach Thomas. Well, he's smart. He's already graduated. Working on graduate studies now. Three-step drop. A quick look in. Pass thrown behind the intended receiver. Bo Scaife, the freshman out of Denver, Colorado. Well, up next, college football Saturday. We head to the Pac-10. And it'll be Arizona versus Oregon State. Steve Fiziak, Tom Ramsey, and James Lofton are standing by as Arizona takes on Oregon State. Fox Sportsnet immediately following our game. And we talk about offense in this game. How about offense in that ball game? Arizona and Oregon State, two and three in the Pac-10 in total offense. Yeah, nobody's playing defense in that no, league. Nobody, yeah. <laughs> Everybody's great on offense, but nobody's <laughs> playing any defense. That's spin control. Great offense, folks. Again, Texas Tech blitz it. Apple White gets the pass away, and it is complete to the five. Great catch by Ryan Nunez. Penalty flag was thrown right where Apple White let it go. It may be rough on a passer after the pickup of 17. Nope, it's going to be a hold against Texas. 
Devin Lemons was really putting the pressure on Major Applewhite, who got the pass away, but the Longhorns were hanging on. The toughness of Applewhite was evident there because he's got a defender in his face, but yet he throws the ball with great velocity, doesn't flinch, takes the hit, and gets up. Holding, Holding. on the offense. Ten-yard penalty from previous five. Now Mac Brown is one of the things he really tried to do here is establish a penalty-free game. Of course, that's almost impossible, but he really tries to teach discipline where that kind of stuff just doesn't happen on a drive. And you know what, though? Sometimes, and I'm not sticking up for the offensive lineman, but sometimes in blitzes, boy, the guy runs past you and you say, I want to grab him so he doesn't hit my quarterback. Right. The trick is, though, is behold, don't let him hit the quarterback. Well, at third down and 24 from the shotgun. Applewhite now sees the rush. Scrambling out of the pocket, throwing it away. Into the end zone, no one was there. Little trickery that time by the Tech defense. They lined up in a four-man front, but they only rushed three players. And I think Major Applewhite was a little bit confused. He was not expecting that. As we look at a guy who's done a brilliant job in Mac Brown, along with Major Applewhite. Both of these two people, Mac number one, but Major Applewhite number two, have really, really embraced this University of Texas football community. Now well, Stockton will attempt the field goal. Ryan Long is spotting the ball right at the 40-yard line. This will be a 50-yarder that will tie his season long. The kick, does it have enough? No. Short and off to the right, so Texas Tech again with another excellent defensive stand, and the Red Raiders will take over. They stopped the Longhorns on fourth down before. Now they don't get the field goal, and Bevo, nothing to smile about. The lowest team leads by seven. Texas Tech has won four of the last six meetings between these two teams, including the last two, and right now Texas, however, leads. Seven to nothing, along with Eric Clemens and Artie Gigantino. I'm Ron Thulin. 83,000 plus in Austin for this ball game. Peters is back in at quarterback, and Sean Williams doesn't have much running room. Here's Eric Clemens with our National Car Rental Game Summer. Eric? Well, Ron, right now it is all home team. Texas controlling things. Montrell Flowers, a 25 yard catch. Applewhite is accurate as usual. Look at the total yards, guys 158 to 33 here early in the second quarter. Guys? Now Rob Peters is back into the football game for Texas Tech. Second down, they give him a yard loss on the last play. Second and 11. Play action. Pass is incomplete. Intended for Daryl Jones, number 87. You know, you look at Peters that time, Ron, and his, his throwing motion. He didn't quite have the zip that he had at the beginning of the game, and no one could. If you go out of the game, you get your elbow x-ray, but he just did not quite have the zip and the velocity of the ball coming off his hand. It'll be interesting to see, number one, what type of passes they throw with him, but also, number two, how many. Because it's hard to run at this Texas defense. Absolutely. They've done a great job, especially with those guys up front. You can see on third down, the Tech has had a long way to go. This is third and 11. But see, there was an example of the quick throw. It was a three-step drop. It was a quick throw. Get it off. Get it out of there. It's not hard. Texas Tech will be forced to kick it away again. Watch this. One, two, three. Throw the quick slant. It's easier on the elbow. He doesn't have to go a great distance. Now Spike Dykes has got to pull something out of his hat. His defense is playing a whale of a ball game. Needs to get something. On offense, a little more than 31 total yards is what they have unofficially right now. Eric Rosillas, 45-yard average on three punts. As long as 49, that was his first punt of the evening. Courtney Garcia has to come up on it from the 33. He is going to be buried at the 34. Excellent coverage again by the Texas Tech special teams. A kick of 36 yards. One on the return. We'll be back to Austin right after this. Bevo is alive and well in Austin, Texas. And, of course, the construction crane outside the stadium. Of course, the new <laughs> renovation complete here at... Darrell K. Royal, Texas Memorial Stadium, and they're going to even start more construction probably next year. And the Raider, or the uh, Longhorn fans start early with the Hook'em Horns. 
Texas with the ball, leading 7-0. They scored on their first possession of the football game. And it's been a defensive Number struggle three, since as Hodges three. Mitchell keeps That's moving his feet. When you talk about Hodges Mitchell, I think one of the things that, that everybody finds interesting for this young guy, he was watching Ricky Williams for a couple of years and said, I need to get bigger. Well, he started going ahead and just loading up on food. But when he got bigger, he lost a lot of his speed. Yeah, but guys 5'7 shouldn't get too big. You know, he's 5'7, he should weigh around 180 pounds. And his father, Hodges Sr., was Mac Brown's roommate at Florida State when they played college football together, which is one of the reasons he's here at Texas with Mac Brown. On second down and three from the 41 for the Longhorns. Mitchell stretching forward up to about the 44 yard line. College football Saturday at Fox Sports Net is brought to you by the all-new 2000 LeSaber by Buick. Pre-engineered to be safer than ever. And on campus, well-lit, the Mustang statue and the fountains. All part of the tradition here in Austin, Texas, the heart of Texas and the state capital. Just a couple of blocks away from the stadium. Third down and one for the Longhorns. Two wide receivers to the right. Brown and Mitchell in the backfield. Cavill in motion. Mitchell, first down, running room in the Texas Tech territory. And the man whose favorite dessert was a banana rumba, rumba his way into Texas Tech territory. You know, when you, you look at a run play, everybody has got to contribute. And this time, watch Kwame Cavill right here. He's going to go back inside and knock number 37 down, Devin Lemons. That's a great job by him. But here's another great job by the left side of that Texas line, opening the hole for Hodges Mitchell. But I love it when wide receivers stick their face into the line of scrimmage and make blocks. And first down, Applewhite pumps right, looking left, plenty of time. Let's it fly, and it's going to be incomplete. Intended for Nunez. Nunez actually started to break up the field, and if Applewhite could have held on to it a half a second more, they may have had an easy six. And you know, you won't see that very often, a miscommunication right. between Major Applewhite and one of his receivers, especially a guy like Nunez, who's a senior, who's been around, a double transfer from the University of Colorado. Well, I was curious about the protection the major was going to get because one of the traditions he has is his girlfriend cooks cookies for the offensive linemen. This week, they didn't do it. And I said, Major, are you concerned? He said, no. Mitchell in motion. On second and ten. Applewhite locking into Nunez, and that pass is going to be overthrown. Nunez being covered like a blanket by Oscar Solis, the senior out of Slayton, Texas, who was lit up last year by the Longhorns. You know, Solis does a great job here. Now, the quarterback and the wide receiver are supposed to be in sync like this picture is, but obviously they're not. Nunez pulls up a little bit. But, you know, I love Solis right there. He's giving him the elbow as he runs down the field. And I think Nunez was turning to the official and say, hey, what about the interference? Not this time, buddy. Not going to get it. Third down and ten. Third down. Look at all these defenders up here, Ron, from Texas Tech around the line of scrimmage. Hard to run inside. And they move up even more. Jonathan Hawkins comes up to the line, and he starts the rush. Applewhite's pass is complete to Flowers. Ball is loose. They're going to say it was down, and it'll be good enough for a first down. Down to the 36-yard line, first down for Texas. The good news is when you put all these guys up in here, you can't run the ball. The bad news is it puts pressure on these guys to be one-on-one. -on -one. And that time, Kwame Cavill is wide open in the inside. Solace comes across and makes the play. But it puts a lot of pressure on your cornerbacks when you put all those guys, seven guys, eight guys, up around the line of scrimmage. You can't play zone behind it. And that was a great illustration of it. Two wide receivers to the left. Flowers, top of your screen. They're looking for him. They're going for him. They're not getting him. So far, Texas Tech's corners are holding up in terms of the bomb. They haven't given up the big play, and Texas is taking shots at it. Well, Sunday at 5 p.m. Eastern, 2 Pacific, it's the fourth annual Top of the World Classic College Basketball Tournament. That's a week from tomorrow. The A-team field includes TCU, Cal, Houston, Alaska, Fairbanks, Indiana State, George Washington, the Sooners of Oklahoma, and Montana State. Previous winners of this tournament include Villanova and Gonzaga. That's the Top of the World Tournament. College basketball, Sunday the 21st, 5 Eastern, 2 Pacific, and I get to go to Fairbanks again.
Mitchell steps over one. Lowers his shoulder, crossing the 35 down to the 34-yard line. Kevin Curtis again to make the stop. But that is the way their defense is designed, is it not? To funnel things toward Kevin Curtis. Absolutely on the outside. And when a guy like Mitchell bangs it outside, a man like Curtis is going to go chase him down. Because we talked about him before. He's big, he's rangy, and he's fast. That last play was a wonderful example of defensive swarm led by him. You know, a lot of safeties are in position to make plays, and they don't. That guy's in a position all the time, and he makes the plays. He's a wonderful open field tackler. I love that stuff. Third down and eight from the shotgun. Applewhite directing traffic. Texas Tech backing off a little bit. Here they come. Applewhite, running room, looking for the yardage stick. Got it. First down, Texas. Jonathan Hawkins is there to force him down. Listening to the play. The sounds of college football. It's, you know, that last time, Applewhite was expecting a four-man front, and he got a three-man front, and I think it fooled him, which is why he held onto the ball, and he took off and scrambled. First and ten from the 24. Hodges Mitchell inside the 20, and as already mentioned, his father was a running back at Florida State, the 11th leading rusher in Florida State history. And I think Mack would have to agree that Hodges just might have the advantage in that category. I'll tell you who else has got the advantage is the Texas offensive line. As we take a look at Mack Brown, because when you run behind number 70, Leonard Davis, Hodges Mitchell is going to make some yards. And Mack Brown said to us, boy, we're going to use big old Leonard Davis as much as we possibly can. The biggest guy in the offensive line in the Big 12. This time they try that left side, but no running room. And this time it looks like he may not have hold his block. Well, you know, you know, I can't always be perfect, but he is six foot six, 367 pounds, played high school basketball, and that time he just gets his head down, which is why the defender that time, Lemons, sort of laid him. But the big guy has got to keep his head up. You know what? They call his nickname is is Big. And one of the problems he had just on that last play was a little bit of inexperience. He's only a junior. Third down and six. Only. Yeah. Cavill in motion. Applewhite sees some pressure looking for the end zone. Intercepted by Texas Tech. Kevin Curtis with his third interception of the year. And in the last five games, he has been the hottest defensive player in the Big 12. Spike likes it. He is truly an All-American candidate. This is perfect center fielder play by a free safety. A timing the jump. He's got the tight end, Mike Jones, covered. He goes up. He takes the ball out of the air. Sort of a bad break for Texas Tech. It's a good news, bad news situation. Spike got the interception, but they're going to mark it at the two-yard line, maybe at the one-yard line. You know, that's one of those rules I wish they would redefine right. because that was clearly momentum that took him into the end zone. Now they're going up against what Rick Dykes, the offensive coordinator at Texas Texas, is the best defensive line in college football, and they show it there. Absolutely no game for Sammy Morris on his first carry. Number senior out of San Antonio. And you know, number 64, Casey Hampton makes a great play. He gets some penetration with his running mates there, Sean Rogers, and they are hard, like you just said, Ron, to run against. They penetrate, they penetrate. Woodard, Hampton, Rogers, Humphrey. That is an excellent defensive line that loves to make tackles for the for losses. Second down. Inside of five minutes, Peters. A little alley-oop. A lot of alley, not a whole lot of oop intended for Tim Baker. Now, this is a tough call here for Rick Dykes, the offensive yeah. coordinator, because it's going to be hard to get the first down, but you want to get the ball to at least the five-yard line so your punter's got some room in the end zone, because otherwise you're only lining up at 10 yards or 11 yards in terms of your punt formation. This is a very difficult call for the offensive staff from Texas Tech. Uh, Daryl Jones has come in. Derek Doris, number 22, flanker from Texas Tech also into the lineup. Third down and 10 from the one and a half yard line. Peters complete to Morris. 
Cuts up field, crosses the 10, leaning forward. It will be close to the first down. That should be enough. What a play by Sammy Morris. Much chronicled his problems he's had the last couple of years. Hasn't been able to play. Came back against AM this year. Rushed for 170 yards. First extended playing time since 1996. You know what, though? That was a huge play in terms of getting some momentum going for this Tech offense. Great call that time by Rick Dykes. It's safe, and it was sure, and it was high percentage completion. Tech tries the right side. Not much running room. Sean Rogers is there to stop the play. Sean Williams again, the freshman out of Andrew, Texas. And, you know, arguably, he might have the most talent of everybody in the defensive line. Sean Rogers, number 73, he's athletic. He's had 21 quarterback pressures coming into this game. He's a guy that will definitely play on Sunday in the National Football League in his future when he gets out of Texas. Well, last year, Texas Tech had almost double the plays of, Tex of Texas. This year, it's the complete opposite. The Texas, out of, the Texas Tech out of drive now. Peters pass. Intercepted. Lee Jackson touchdown. The Texas defense had a drought of not scoring, was broken up last week, but they got another one tonight, courtesy of Lee Jackson, his second interception of the year off the hands of Derek Norris. Stockton for the extra point. Right down the middle. 3.53 left to play in the first half. Peters is intercepted. Texas takes it back to the score. When we come back, we'll send it to Kellen Winslow and Kevin Frazier in our studios in Los Angeles. All right, thanks, Kevin. We know you'll update us on that Penn State game today. Of course, the Nebraska-Kansas State game in a sea of orange in Austin, Texas tonight. The crowd upwards of 84,000 on hand to see if the Longhorns will go to San Antonio December 4th for the Big 12 championship game, or will it be Texas Tech if they can pull out the victory? Couple that with a win next week against Oklahoma, and they'll go to San Antonio. The short kick. Fumble. Texas has it. At the 19-yard line, Texas comes up with a football. Now, that was done on purpose. That was a huge kickoff that they wanted to try to make a Texas Tech receiver field. But I'll tell you, it's harder than it looks because you got guys in his face. Boy, what a momentum changer here. Now you're going to see this. Hunter walks up, and he doesn't see the ball hit him. The ball goes like it goes right through his hand. Wow, what a big error that time. Bo Trahan, the redshirt freshman out of Bay City, Texas. And Ricky Hunter, though, Ron, has got to watch that football. You can't make a mistake like oh, that. No. You, gotta, you can fair catch a kickoff. Fair catch it if you feel pressure. They keep it on the ground. Hodges Mitchell leaning with his back inside the 15 down to the 13-yard line. The last Texas touchdown, of course, came on the interception by Jackson. It was almost caught. And watch this play. Now, you got about nine Texas guys on the line of scrimmage. He is going to go inside. He, Doris, is going to come outside. Jackson's going to come over and cover him. Doris drops the ball right into Jackson's hands. Touchdown, Texas. How close was that to Doris catching that ball? He had a lot of daylight. And you know, Texas is taking advantage of its turnovers that its defense is forced this year. Fifth in the NCAA in turnover margin. Mitchell straight ahead inside the 10. Down to the 8-yard line. Curtis hanging on. Mitchell is only 5'7". We talked about it, but he's a powerful, stocky, explosive runner. And that was a good example of a back keeping his feet moving and keeping his knees high when he runs through the line of scrimmage. The offensive line from Texas, Ron, is doing a great job of controlling the Texas Tech defensive front. And they should because they're a lot bigger than that Tech front. Tech has had a couple of excellent defensive stands tonight. They need one now. You can see what the Longhorns have done in the red zone. Texas Tech creeping up to the line of scrimmage. Mitchell stopped. Doesn't get to the five-yard line. 
This Texas Tech defense, you never count them out. We have seen it on so many occasions. We saw it last year against Texas. You thought that they were down and out in their numbers in red zone. Well, they're gutty and they're resilient. They had two goal line stands a week ago against Iowa State. And a goal line stand can really change the momentum of a defense and the momentum of a game. On second down, Mitchell cutting back. Kevin Curtis hanging on again. Now, this is a situation, if Mac Brown decides it's a run situation, where he substitutes two other backs, and he has three backs in the backfield. Now, it doesn't look like he's going to do it here, but in the past three games, he has substituted an extra tight end, put him in the backfield, and an extra fullback, and put him at tailback. Ricky Brown, the fullback, number 44 in the ballgame. Third down. This will, be a, this will be a pass outside. The look in. Touchdown. Kwame Cavill with the touchdown. When he sent Hodges Mitchell's in motion, what he wanted to do was spread out the defense. When he spread out the defense, you open up scenes inside for guys like Kwame Cavill. Touchdown on a slam. Texas is 8-0, and Cavill catches a touchdown pass. With 1.22 left in the half, Stockton will try to make it a three-touchdown lead. And it is good. Mac Brown was worried that there might be a lot of emotion on senior day, and his team might not be up. That hasn't been the case so far. Two left to play in the half and Texas has taken a 21 nothing lead they are stopping Texas Tech offensively the Red Raiders only 42 yards total offense to 222 for Texas again another line drive kick Sean Williams tries the right side looking for a seam nothing doing up to the 27 yard line well, coming up on halftime of the Nissan Halftime Report, Kevin Frazier and Kellen Winslow with all the scores and highlights, all the upsets that happened today in college football. How about Tennessee losing the BCS Madness? Plus, we'll take a look, of course, at the Great Dane, Ron Dane's record-setting performances. He now takes over the lead in NCAA for rushing. We have a penalty flag thrown on the kickoff, and I think it may be offsides against Texas. You know, I was in the studio last week, Ron, and I enjoyed it. But I'll tell you, that Kellen, he can eat now. <laughs> yeah. I tell you, everybody's on the grocery line before he gets there. Well, they are going to re-kick. It's against Texas, and they'll try it again. But he was right. Kellen Winslow was 100% right about Ron Day. He knew that he was going to get the Heisman, and he certainly will. Well, speaking of upsets, the AP Top 10. How about Virginia Tech? They are now losing to Miami, 10-7. to Wow. Of course, Kansas State losing, Penn State losing, Mississippi State lost to Alabama. Big win for the Crimson Tide. And, and Tennessee lost. And Tennessee lost. So you throw in Nebraska now, they have a shot at the national title. It is not over yet. Well, you know, it's when you lose in this PCS. If you lose early in the year, you can make a comeback. Uh -huh. If you lose late in the year, like a couple of those teams did last week and this week, boy, you're really out of the contention. From the 30, the line drive kick again. Picked up at the 32-yard line by Tim Wynn, and he is going to be barreled up at about the 38-yard line. The six yards out of the return, and we have a little pushing and shoving going on, a little scrum. Never understood guys that are wearing all that padding that start to push and shove each other. Well, I never stood, understood I mean, when guys punch sense. each other. Yeah, that's <laughs> not real smart, is it? And Texas Tech will take over. They have 70 seconds to work with. Texas Tech has got to obviously try to get on the scoreboard here. So you go into halftime on a positive mm -hmm. note with a little more right. momentum. But you don't want to do something dumb. No, you give up a big play. Another. That's right. Peters hit as he throws. Pass is complete. What a hit again. Derek Doris makes the catch, but he was lowered by Greg Brown, the junior out of Baton Rouge, Louisiana. And he's a... And you know what? He, you saw him right there. He's a chatty guy, but he backs it up with his physical play. 
Well, Derek Doris has a little history, of course, with this Texas team. Last year, he had a block that the Texas players took exception to that took the knee out from Anthony Hicks, which he had to undergo surgery. Anthony Hicks wouldn't talk about it, but the rest of the team did. They said, if we get a shot at Derek Doris, we're going to hit him clean and fair, and we're going to make him feel it. You know, he was a teammate of Major Applewhites in high school. And he caught a long touchdown pass, like a 78-yard touchdown pass, his junior year from the major. So here they are, two high school classmates, teammates, here at the University of Texas. Well, college football will continue on Fox Sports Net next Saturday. Most of you will see number 21, Southern Miss, taking on Louisville. And Oregon State versus Oregon. A great day for college football. It all begins at 3 o'clock Eastern time. 12 noon Pacific on Fox Sports Net. You know, Bauer's doing a great job at Southern Miss again this year. You know, going, going back to Greg Brown, a hit like that, just it's unbelievable what it does to the crowd. It sets the tempo for everybody. You love to see defensive backs come up and just lower the boom on wide receivers. And I'll talk about lowering the boom with this time oh, of my. possession. It's 2-1 to one Texas over Texas Tech. Peters throwing it up, and the pass is off the fingertips intended for Tim Baker. Baker trying to use all the 6-5 frame that he has. Peters had it on the mark, but again, already every time Peters throws the football, he's got somebody slapping him upside the head. Yeah, he, they level him, but you know what? The secondary that time did a wonderful job, led by Greg Brown again, of double covering Timmy Baker. You see Irvis Hill, he was the corner that time. Greg Brown was the safety that came over the top. The right corner in the safety did a great job of double coverage. Three-step drop, penalty flag is thrown as the pass is incomplete. It looked like Roderick Babers, the freshman out of Houston, Texas, may have got a little piece of the receiver. Pass interference on a defense. Automatic first down sound at the spot of the foul. You know, when you play a lot of man-to-man -man coverage, interference penalties are going to go up. And especially in a situation like this, when you think you're getting beat and the receiver's going by you, you have a tendency to grab him. Babers is an excellent young corner. And Mac Brown loves this young defense because they're all back next year except for one or two guys. Oh, they're going to be so strong. Peters pumps. Again, he has to spin away from coverage. Pass is incomplete. Penalty flag is thrown as Peters took a knock up on the head again. And that'll be a late hit. That'll be a late yeah. hit on the quarterback. He is dinging again. Personal foul, roughing the passer. Boy, Peters took a shot. I think we lost count how many hits this young man has taken tonight. And that was the right call by the officials because he was out in the open. He was exposed. There was no one close to him when he got rid of the football. That was a good call that time. Personal foul. Big 12 officiating crew. Nothing to pass. 15-yard penalty. First down. You're going to see Peters get outside. He gets rid of the football. But no, you can't do that, Everett Rawls. Everett Rawls, number two, you can't do that. Linebackers coming from the linebacker plane up the field. It's awful obvious when you knock the quarterback down. Now everybody is standing here at Memorial Stadium. Pass, complete, drop. Another great hit by the secondary. Lee Jackson lowered the boom, and I'm telling you, Texas has come with a purpose tonight. They set their jaws before this game started. You look at number 23, Lee Jackson. He's big. He's swift. He's physical. In fact, they almost moved him the linebacker a year ago. They asked him if he wanted to play linebacker. He said, no, give me one more shot at safety, and the rest is history. But he's a linebacker playing safety. The number's on Lee Jackson. Three wide receivers to the left. Peters feeling the pressure again. Stepping up, scrambled, dragged down from behind at the 28-yard line. Pick up a two on the play. Corey Redding, the freshman out of Houston, Texas, the former National Defensive Player of the Year on the stop. Texas Tech is going to call a timeout. You know, I went to practice on Thursday, and when we were watching, Mac Brown and I were talking, we were watching practice, I said, who is that guy, number 40? You know, because he's a young man that hasn't started. As you said, he's a true freshman. But, boy, is he a good-looking player, and he's going to chase down quarterbacks for the next four years in the open field. 
I'll get all the football news, highlights, and analysis you can handle as we bring you in-depth pro, college, and even some high school pigskin coverage. It's weeknights at 6 p.m. on Fox Sports Net. Check your local listings. And when we say in-depth coverage, they are not kidding of not only the pro game, but also the college. And they throw a little high school in there to boot. And Bevo again. The favorite mascot, of course. What are, what are these guys <laughs> thinking of these know. costumes? Between <laughs> this guy and the guy up at the Nebraska? I mean, there's some great mascots. Look at that. I want to see this guy go up against the guy from Nebraska. Yeah. They've got one like that. What's his name? Herbie, Herbie Husker. Herbie Husker? It's like a battle royale. Having it on like WCW or WWF or something. How about pressured seven times that's tonight? The, that's the key stat right there. He's been pressured and knocked down seven times. Third down and eight. Peters pressured again and again. The pass is incomplete. Bodies are flying everywhere. Redding again right in the thick of things. And this freshman showing just how good he is. Jonathan Gray, whose fuse isn't all that long, trying to break things up. And Peters complaining about it. You know, Peters is having a rough night. He steps up, and you see, wow. His old man hit him. His old man hit him. The house fell over. The house got knocked down on top of Peters. Oh. Last time a house fell on somebody that hurt, I think it was Wizard of Oz. <laughs> timeout, time Texas out. Tech. Texas Tech. The last timeout. That's the last timeout for Texas Tech. Peters needs the time to catch his wind, Get I think. You know, it's a bad night when you're not only Texas hitting you, but also your own players. But it's been tough on Peters and company. Texas's philosophy on defense in the Mac Brown era has been to blitz, blitz more, and blitz a little bit more. They are aggressive, they run fast, they penetrate the line of scrimmage, and if they think it's a passing situation, they're going to blitz you. Spike Dykes and his offensive staff knew that. They knew they had to get rid of the football quickly tonight. The biggest question they had going into this game was can we withstand the pressure and the blitzing from the Texas defense? We apologize for those of you who are eating supper at this point. <laughs> Bevo. This thing, one of these days will be on one of our plates. <laughs> one of the great mascots in all of college football. One of them. I think we need to have Eric Clemens like run with it. Right? Don't you think? Yeah, I'm going to watch it from up here. Yeah, be Eric. yeah, I'm not sure he runs anymore, Ron. <laughs> he doesn't look like he's in the best no. of shape. No. Well, it is fourth down and eight for Texas Tech. The final 31 seconds of the half from the shotgun. Peters in trouble. Throwing up the prayer, and it will be incomplete. Intended for Tim Baker, again, the tallest receiver. But Lee Jackson and Greg Brown going up, and Lee Jackson gets up with a little hitch in his get along. You know, they got to be careful because they almost made a mistake there. Jackson should just knock the ball down. Don't worry about the interception right there yeah. because it was fourth down. Because if you would have caught the interception, it would have been like allowing them to punt. you got to, as a safety, know the situation at all times. You see Jackson's hobbling a little bit, and Mac Brown does not need another safety yeah. to get injured because that's the one area on this football team that's gotten banged up a little bit this year. It's the safety position. Applewhite's just going to take a knee. That'll be the last play of the half. Texas Tech, not much offensively. Only 55 yards. Texas with 222 yards. Applewhite with a 25-yard touchdown pass. They got one on an interception from Lee Jackson, and that is why they have the 21 to nothing lead at halftime. As the clock ticks down, the final seconds, and officially that is the end of the first half. And Texas Tech just can't get anything going offensively. You gotta love that Longhorn defense, though. They're blitzers, they're fast, they're aggressive, and they penetrate. And here's Eric Clemens with Mac Brown. All right, Coach, uh, you took advantage of a couple of turnovers and stuff, but, and you talked about emotion to us yesterday. Your assessment of the first half? Well, it, I thought we came out and had a tremendous amount of motion to start the game, and then I thought things got too easy for us. We weren't getting in the end zone, so I thought we went a little flat. Defensively, we played outstanding. We can't have the penalties we had on the last drive. Offense hasn't turned the ball over. Kicking game's been good, but we've got to get the ball in the end zone for this second half. All right, Coach, good luck to you in the second half. 21-0, favor of Texas. 
here at the half over Texas Tech. Now time for our Nissan Halftime Report. Let's send you to our college football Saturday studios where Kevin Fraser and Kellen Winslow are standing by. Guys? Thanks a lot. Since the Big 12 came together, Texas Tech 9-2 and two versus Texas teams. But tonight, two turnovers have proved very costly. And that has allowed Texas to open up a 21-0 lead at halftime. And Mac Brown's squad scored on a pass from Major Applewhite. Nardi Gigantino tells us why it happened. Nardi? And one of the things Texas Tech is doing tonight is they're getting eight and nine guys up around the line of scrimmage. And what the weakness is, sometimes it isolates a corner one on one with the wide receiver. And that's what happened on this play. Apple White goes back to pass, Nunes catches it out, and runs it in for a touchdown. What happens is number 31, Mike Kirk, Kevin Curtis, is of no help because he gets sucked up in trying to play the run. And that's what made it 7 0. 14 second quarter points by the Longhorns. Thanks to an interception for a touchdown and a fumble after a kickoff. And that is why Texas Tech finds themselves on the short end of a stick at 21 0. Texas really only had one sustained successful offensive drive. That was on that touchdown pass on the opening drive of the ball game. But you know what they've got? They've got momentum. <laughs> and yeah. it seems like everything is going their way in terms of the ball falling correctly on the muff. Kickoff return, the fumble on that, the tip pass. Onside kick by Texas Tech. Did they get it? They tried to get something a little dangerous to start it off. Penalty flag is thrown. It was out of bounds. Interesting way to start the second half for Spike Dykes. He's going to reach into the bag of tricks. Well, you know, you got to do something, though, because what you don't want to have happen is Texas get the ball, go to length of the field, yeah. score, and then the game is over. There it is again. It's a good try. It's a pretty good kick, but it is out of bounds. We have three kicks. Out of bounds. By rule, will be placed where it went out of bounds. First down. Now Spike Dykes tried to get something going, just rolled the dice. It was unsuccessful, so Texas will take over first and ten from their own 44-yard line. Major Applewhite back at the helm, changing the play at the line of scrimmage. It's an audible to some type of pass. Five-step drop, dumps it out of the flat, passes complete to Kwame Cavill, his seventh reception of the evening. Eric Clemens on the sideline, and Eric, how's the mood of Texas Tech? Well, not too bad right now, considering what's happened to them in the first half. Coach Dykes told me earlier they have a long way to go. They must play hard and, most of all, play with patience. However, they're going to have to play without Rob Peters. He suffered a concussion somewhere late in that first half. He will not return to the game this evening. It'll be Cliff Kingsbury from here on out, guys. Well, you knew that it was more than just an elbow, just looking at the eyes of Rob Peters. Apple White, plenty of time, dumps it off, complete. Hodges Mitchell showing his speed, and he is corralled at the 28-yard line. That is why Hodges Mitchell came in with 29 receptions on the year coming into this game. Once again, he had great time in the pocket, and it was opening up where he could see. Well, he's got room in the pocket. You see Mitchell get out of the backfield. But look at all this room, and he's got a vision up in here where he throws the football, and he dumps it off perfectly to Hodges Mitchell. We talked one of the keys to this game was getting the playmakers in space. That was a great example of the playmaker Hodges Mitchell in space. Pick up of 23, the man they call Baby Barry after Barry Sanders. And here's Baby Barry again. Down to about the 22-yard line, Tim Duffy from his inside linebacker spot, the senior out of Jefferson, Texas on the stop. But you have to give credit to the Texas Tech defense. I mean, they could have packed the 10 in a couple of times tonight. They just had their backs to the wall most of the evening. Yeah, I don't think you're ever going to see that happen with Texas Tech. But what you're going to see happen now is I really believe Texas is going to try to just pound the football up inside mm -hmm. and be fairly conservative so they don't give the Tech defense a big play opportunity. Well, when you get five yards on first down, that does help. It Second really helps. Five. Little play action, Apple White rolls left, rolls right, passes incomplete, intended for Kwame Cavill. Got a little greedy that time because Ricky Brown was wide open in the flat. And you look at Major, he's upset at himself because he knows he could have thrown the football somewhere else or took it and run it up mm -hmm. the field to get the first down. 
But I love him because he's a perfectionist, and he knows when he's made a mistake, which is very few with far in very between. Very few. And talking to him yesterday, just about things other than football, he is such a bright young man. And I said, would you please wait for my daughters? I know you have a girlfriend, but you're the kind of guy I want to have date my kids. Quick three-step drop, looking, complete to Mitchell. Leans forward inside the 20 down to the 18-yard line. Keith Cockrum, the senior out of Gulfway, Texas, holding on. That'll bring up a fourth down and about a oh, yard. Maybe a little less. Coming into the game, Texas had been 5 for 9 on fourth down. But Matt Brown has elected to attempt the field goal here. Interesting strategy with the big offensive line that has had a lot of success tonight. Mac's going to have an attempt of about 35 yards by Stockton. Stockton missed one earlier from 50 yards out. 19 to 26. He needs two field goals and 13 points to set the new records here at Texas. The kick got it away. Split in the uprights. So Chris Stockton won away from setting a new record here at UT. And the Longhorns again on the opening drive of the second half with points on the board. Texas leads it 24 nothing. College football Saturday on Fox Sports Net is brought to you by National Car Rentals. So, what are you waiting for? Let's go. And that is the State Capitol building here in Austin, Texas, just a couple of blocks away from Darrell K. Royal, Texas Memorial Stadium, and Joe Jamail Field. And that is not George W. Bush, the governor of Texas, although he probably has a hat like that, I'm sure. Chris Stockton set to kick it away, leading 24 to nothing. Shad Williams and John Norman set to receive the kick. This will be Norman from the 10. Looking for the same slips at the 18-yard line and piled on by guys wearing white jerseys. Great job again tonight by the Texas kickoff team of covering kicks. The ball is getting up in the air, and it's given Spike Dyke a lot to worry about. But these guys have done a great job of running down the field and covering kicks. Mac Brown worked very hard during the week on his kicking game. Some areas have been weak this year. Net punt, punt return. But one area that's been sensational is the kickoff cover team. Well, Cliff Kingsbury, the redshirt freshman out of New Braunfels in a quarterback. 0 for 5 in that first half roll of the football. Ralph Peters out for the game. John Williams, nothing doing. Aaron Humphrey is there to wrap him up. The senior out of Lubbock, Texas, who started as a freshman in his career, has just gotten better and better. He is a pure street fighter from that left defensive end spot. And, you know, he'll enjoy this win if they can hang on to win the game because in his career, he's 1-2 and two against Texas Tech. And that's tough for him to go home this summer to Lubbock knowing that he's lost oh, yeah. 2 out of 3 to the Red Raiders. But that was a good example of the speed that Humphreys has. Williams left side has some running room crosses the 20 up to the 25 yard line and that's probably the most successful run of the evening and of course tonight was senior night here at UT and Mac Brown was concerned at the beginning of the game that the emotions wouldn't get out of hand sit there after the game with 84,000 people how many people get to play it uh, do what they love to do have a game in front of 84,000 national Fox TV audience so lay out there on the field after the game till 12:30. Look up in the stands and enjoy it. Go out tomorrow and, and stand there and think about the memories. But during the game, uh, make it something you want to remember for the rest of your life. Third down and four. These seniors will remember the last two years. Kingsbury drop sack. Roderick Babers, a freshman out of Houston, Texas, his third sack of the year, the second sack of the evening for the Longhorns. Kingsbury, that's the second time he's been put to the turf. The secondary from Texas had five sacks coming into this game out of Texas's 35 sacks. Most of them have come from the corners in the nickel defense when they blitz off the corner. That was a wonderful example of it with Babers being the blitzer. Now Rosillas will kick it away. Four punts in that first half were just over a 43-yard average. Courtney Garcia standing at his 40. And the kick is tipped. 
And it'll fall harmlessly at the 33-yard line. Texas came with everybody and got a piece of it. Terrell Dillon, he has been the blockmeister of University of Texas. Three block punts this year. And that's why he's now on scholarship. You see him sneaking in right there. And what he does, he gets a piece of it. He could have really had a clean block if he would have just taken it off the foot of the punter. You don't want to leave your feet. But that's a sensational effort by the ex-Naval Academy transfer. Yeah, Dylan went to the Naval Academy out of San Antonio, Texas. And spent six months there Rosillas can only think about it and lonely thoughts when you get a punt block if you're the punter right lonely thoughts and Dylan said he didn't like the boot camp Applewhite seeing pressure and he is going to be dropped that'll be the first sack of the evening for the Red Raider defense Keith Cochran his second sack of the year Cochran comes off the corner and just goes after Applewhite but does a great job and has wonderful determination of keeping with it and grabbing Applewhite and bringing him down to the ground. I think the Red Raiders right now have got to start blitzing mm -hmm. a little bit more because they need to make something happen and generate a possibility of getting the football back. Both offensive coordinators said controlling the tempo of the ball game was essential, and right now it's all Texas. Mitchell in motion. The quick pass, Cavill has running room. To the 30, and he is going to be run out of bounds just shy of the 30-yard line. Look like Kwame Cavill may have a lot more green to run on. Well, tomorrow at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 Pacific, it's the NFL this morning. Join Chris Myers with Jackie Slater, Marv Levy, and Chris Spielman. This week's special address, Green Bay Packer quarterback Brent Favre, three-time NFL MVP. Set the record for most consecutive starts by a quarterback last week with his 116th straight start. That's the NFL this morning, tomorrow at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 Pacific, on Fox Sports Net. Check your local listings. Now, you see Texas here, they're in their three wide receiver set. Guy here, here, and here. Three wide receivers. They want to spread out this Tech defense. Texas Tech was blitzing, no play. Penalty flag is thrown. Tech was coming with everybody. And I think Tech may have called a timeout. Texas Tech. That's interesting. You would have to assume that they didn't have enough men on the field. But nevertheless, it is a timeout, and we'll step aside. Spike Dykes has 9.45 to work here in the third quarter. His team trails 24-0. Now the Red Raider cheerleaders making their way from Lubbock. And now Texas with a football. Third down and eight at the Red Raider 30-yard line. From the shotgun, Applewhite, pass complete. And if they spot it where it should be, it'll be short of the first down. Jamel Thompson, the junior out of Dallas, Texas, with his fifth reception of the year. He had the uh, the distance, but it looks like he came back a little bit, Arnie, when he made the reception. It's exactly what happened, and now you're going to see Mac Brown elect to go for it here on fourth down instead of trying the field goal. He's got two tight ends in the game. Excuse me, one tight end in the game. And Applewhite going behind that massive front line, keeps it. Runs and forward, that should be good enough for a first down for Texas. The Longhorns enjoying their highest ranking since September of 1996 when they were nine, number six. And it's due to that man right there. He has brought the faithful back yeah. to the University of Texas. He has embraced the tradition of the University of Texas. He can be elected mayor of Austin, governor of yeah. Texas right now. He's brought the Darrell Royals and the Earl Campbell back in fold in this program. And he's won games. And everybody loves Mac Brown. And that's how much they like him here. Mac Brown for president. I think you should start with governor with I, I, W. He's got a better job president. than the yeah. president. Believe me, the head coach of Texas is a better job than the president. Three, he's got a better record, too. Quickly hit Hodges Mitchell as the penalty flag is thrown. Jonathan Hawkins lowered the boom on him. Well, there's some hits tonight. There's oh, a lot that. of physical play on the field this evening. That's a hole against the Longhorns. And the Big 12 South standings, you can see the importance of this. Texas at 5-1, and one, Oklahoma a winner today at 4-2. and two. Of course, Tech and Oklahoma meet next week, and 
Oklahoma's been a real pest for Texas Tech the last couple of years, and A&M at four and three, followed by Oklahoma State and Baylor, and of course, in the north, Nebraska with the win today. They still have to play Colorado, and if they can secure that victory, they would finish seven and one in the conference, and they will be going to San Antonio, but Colorado is going to be a big obstacle for the Cornhuskers. Well, exactly right. I mean, it's not going to be an automatic win for the University of Nebraska. And I know their mentality up there. They're not going to take it as an automatic right. win. They're going to go in and expect the battle, and that's what they're going to get. First down and 20 now but from the 32, Mitchell. Not much running room, but he made something out of it. And he crosses the 25 down to the 24-yard line. Again, Jonathan Hawkins holding on. He gets better and better. I'm talking about Hodges Mitchell as the game goes on. Great backs do that. They get into a rhythm. They punish the defense. And that's what he's doing right now. He's gotten better and better and better as this game has gone on, just like he has during the course of this year. It's gotten better and better. Well, he rushed for over 5,000 yards and 65 touchdowns in high school. And you can see the total offense, all Texas so far. Tech showing blitz. Here they come. Apple White gets away from him. Pass is complete to Jamel Thompson. Inside the 10, down to the 7-yard line. Thompson, the junior out of Dallas, Devin Lemons, is the one who brought him down. the poise of Major Applewhite. Watch this. He's just going to step up into the pocket. He's going to elude a rusher. He's going to put the ball. It's not a great pass. It's a wobbly pass, but it gets to where it's supposed to be. Great poise by a young sophomore quarterback. Pickup of 17 on the play, and Texas knocking on the door again. And make no mistake about it, we talked about this before, Major Applewhite is part of the rebirth of Texas football. Nunez wide to the left as they keep it on the ground. Mitchell inside the five, down to the three-yard line. He doesn't need a whole lot of running room. The guy whose first love was soccer, in fact, he was outside playing tackle football with a couple of guys when he was younger. A coach drove by and said, hey, do you play football? He says, no, and the coach had to go in, convince his mom that he should play football instead of soccer, but he still says soccer is his number one love. Go. Make a lot more money playing football. You better believe it. He's got 94 yards tonight, and he'll break that century mark pretty soon here. Second down and goal from the three. Mitchell looking for Pater. Short. Exact same play that we saw in the first quarter down on the goal line where Kwame Cavill comes over and throws the block in the line of scrimmage. You're going to see Cavill right here to the right of your screen. Nice job. And why he throws that block and why it's so key, because he cuts off the pursuit right there, which is why that hole opens up. You might not think it's an important block, but on the back side, you cut off pursuit when you throw blocks like that. Well, Chad Stevens, number 82, has checked in along with Mike Jones. Stevens in motion, leading the way, leading in, touchdown for Robertson. Chris Robertson, Mr. Touchdown for Texas. That, that was that big backfield we had talked about with Robertson and Chad Stevens in the back. But who would you run behind? Number 70, what a great job by Leonard Davis of just taking the defender, Devin Lemons, and knocking him into the end zone. I'd run behind that guy, too, mm. down on the goal line. All 367 pounds of him. Players were kidding Mac Brown the other day. They said, Coach, you know, when Robertson comes in, the hands usually go up. Let's play this guy more. Stockton's extra point is good. Robertson with his ninth rushing touchdown of the year. That's amazing. Oh, it's great. For a part-time player in the Longhorns, lead it now, 31-zip. Texas with a win tonight, of course, secures at least a share of the Big 12 South Championship, but it will assure them a bit of a December 4th game in San Antonio at the Alamo Dome for the Big 12 Championship. And right now, they are spanking Texas Tech 31 nothing with 5.58 left to play in quarter number three. Stopped in to kick it away. They tried a couple pooch kicks. This time, he's just going to nail it. And it will not be returned. Eric Clemens has been roaming the field, but Eric, you've made your way into what I think Texas fans would probably call hollowed ground. Yeah, Ron, you know, I took an informal survey before the game, if they don't push me off here, 
and very few fans that are up here right now know that they're standing on hallowed ground. This grass was taken from the end zone that Ricky Williams actually scored in when he set the record last year. The all-time rushing record broken today by Ron Dane, so they're going to probably take a little grass with them. Maybe I'll take some myself, guys. I think it'll be on your knees after they shove it out. <laughs> Sammy Morris ushered out of bounds. One thing I think that is obvious from last year to this year, the speed of Texas's defense. When Mac Brown took over this, he said, you know, we've got to go on a speed search. But he obviously did because they are a lot quicker than this defense was last year, which was a patchwork type team. Of course, Ron Dane, as Eric mentioned, he now has 6,397, breaking Ricky Williams' rushing record. So Ron Dane, number one, Ricky drops to number two. Sammy Morris now getting some time at the tailback spot. And, and you know, Sammy's been quiet today. I mean, the Texas defense has held him in check. And like you said before, one of the reasons is he hasn't had the opportunity to play tailback as much as he did in the victory over Texas A&M. You look at Sammy, six foot, 220 pounds. Some people think that he is the number one fullback prospect coming out in this year's draft. Not only because of his running ability, but because of his hands and his blocking ability. Well, that was his fourth carry, but he's been able to match muster only five yards. It's a third down and three for the Red Raiders. The pitch back to Morris. Penalty flag is thrown. He leans up to the 29-yard line. Will be short of the first down. Now, what Spike Dykes is doing here, he's attempting to protect his young quarterback. He doesn't want to drop back and start throwing the ball this whole second half because he knows Texas is going to come and blitz him. And that's not fair to Cliff Kingsbury, mm -hmm. a young, inexperienced player, to be put in that position. I think this is the right thing for Spike Dykes. You know, one thing about Spike Dykes, though, he is 9-2 and two since the Big 12 started against... Baylor, Texas A&M, and the penalty. University of Texas. Penalties declined. Fourth down. So Texas Tech will be forced to kick it away. There is John Goodner, the defensive coordinator right there, and Rick Dykes, the offensive coordinator, and I think that picture tells it all. Yeah, it does. You can pour old Rick Dykes over here with his head in his hands and trying to move the ball, but it's not his offense's fault. Give the credit to those guys on defense from the University of Texas. I think they've just played super, and it all starts with those four down guys. Eric Rosillas has been a very busy man tonight on fourth down and one. He has averaged just over 37 yards. His last punt was tipped by Terrell Dillon. That was good. Again, Texas almost gets a piece of it. Penalty flag is thrown because Rosillas is down. Did not get a piece of the football. Texas again with a hard rush. That will be a personal foul against the Longhorns. And, and Bo Trey and number 18 lost control of his body. And that's what happens when you go and you leave your feet. You try to block the kick. If you don't get it, there's no way you can bring yourself under control when you get to the punter. You're going to see number 18 appear in your screen right there. You see how he goes up in the air? There's no way he can have body control when you're in the air. That's why when I was coaching special teams, I always said to those guys, take the ball off the punter's foot. That way you don't leave your feet. You have total control over your body in case you miss the block. And that's an example right there of why you don't want to leave your feet. And you know the difference between winning conference championships as Texas Tech jumps off sides and winning national championships is you've got to eliminate those type of mistakes. Absolutely, because it's not just a penalty, but it's give the other team another chance. Well, well, here Texas Tech gets a good opportunity, and then what do they do? They jump offside, yeah. pushes them back. But, you know, we've talked about this for three years now, Ron, and you're so right when you bring it up. It's not the penalty that matters. It's when the penalty occurs. Right. And when they occur on third down or fourth down in that case, they're just killing. James Perry letting it fly. Passes short. That is going to be incomplete. Should have been picked off. Lee Jackson had it right in the meat hooks. Couldn't wrap up the pigskin. Well, next Saturday, more college football will be coming your way right here on Fox Sports Net, the number 21 team in the country. The Golden Eagles of Southern Miss taking on Louisville. That'll get underway at 3 o'clock Eastern time. 
And then Oregon State versus Oregon in one of the traditional rivalries in the Northwest. That'll get underway at 6.30 Eastern time. Once again, gets underway at 3 Eastern on Fox Sports Net. The Civil War. Oregon Civil against Oregon Eastern. State. Cliff still looking for his first completion. Being hounded. And he is dropped at the 29-yard line by Aaron Humphrey. The third sack of the night for the Longhorns. Everett Rawls had the first hit. And Cliff Kingsbury couldn't get away from him. But the pressure again coming off the corners with the outside linebackers and the corners have really, really helped guys like Aaron Humphrey make big plays. He's from Lubbock. We've talked about it all night. You know he's going to have a big smile on his face after this game if the Longhorns hang yeah. on to win this football game. Well, Sean Rogers came off the field for Texas holding his arm. Let's try to get an update on his condition. Kingsbury hit as he throws the ball, and it is incomplete. D. Jackson was the intended receiver, and again, the Texas defense putting so much pressure on the Tech quarterback. You know, Sean you Rogers, is he's being worked on by the trainers. And well, hopefully it's not too serious, but, you know, when, when, when you have a mentality of blitz and pressure, it frees up guys like Sean Rogers from getting double teamed. He, this, this defense is a defensive tackle's dream. Casey Hampton, Sean Rogers, Aaron Humphrey, they're never double teamed mm -hmm. because the offense has always got to worry about the linebackers and the safeties in the corners. This time, Texas peels back. Rosillas gets off a dandy. Garcia at his 28-yard line. Still on his feet to the 32. Slips and falls. A kick of 44 yards will give him four on the return. Well, Sunday at 5 o'clock Eastern on November the 24th, 2 Pacific, it's the fourth annual Top of the World Classic College Basketball Tournament. The team field includes TCU, Cal, Houston, Alaska Fairbanks, Indiana State, George Washington, Oklahoma, and Montana State. That's the Top of the World Classic College Basketball Tournament, Sunday, November 21st, 5 Eastern, 2 Pacific, on Fox Sports Net. Rogers being worked on, still on the near sideline. As Texas takes over, first down from their own 32-yard line, and they keep it on the ground. A helmet flies, Mitchell, look out. Shaken at the 35, dragged down at the 25. Penalty flag has been thrown. Roger, Hodges Mitchell showing that great speed. Gets to the outside and just blows right by the defense. It all starts up front. Look at the great job of blocking by the Texas offensive line. Everybody, including Kwame Cavill, number nine, gets a block, a block downfield, a block at the line of scrimmage, and Hodges Mitchell gets into the secondary of Texas Tech. You know, we talked about this before, but the Texas offensive line outweighs the defensive front in Texas Tech by almost 100 pounds. Now, there was no penalty flag on that play. They picked it up. As Texas just ramming it straight ahead behind the big beefy offensive line of the Texas coaching box. And this is for, this is, uh, excuse me, Carl Reese right here, the defensive coordinator. But Greg Davis is the mastermind behind this offense. Greg Davis has been a longtime assistant coach in college football, ex head coach at Tulane University, deserves a head coaching job now or next year at a major college. He's done a brilliant job with his Texas offense. Well, he's a native Texan. Mack calls him the best quarterback coach in the country. That's high praise. Been with Mack a long time. Cavill in motion, Applewhite. Straight back. Pass is complete to Cavill. Inside the 15, down to the 10-yard line. Although that was a good completion by Major Applewhite, you saw the Texas Tech defense, and what they do so well is they didn't allow them a whole lot of yards after the catch, and that's why they're one of the best in the country on pass defense. They come up and they tackle. They tackle the receiver. But one other thing, Ron, that's starting to happen right now is they're getting tired. You're going to see some substitution now because the Texas Tech defense has been on the football field almost 28 minutes compared to the Texas defense, which mm. has only been, I mean, it's really been a long, hard night for the Tech defense. 
Complete opposite of last year. Yeah. Applewhite -like scrambling direct in traffic. Pass is incomplete, intended for Montreal Flowers. Oscar Solis on the coverage. Well, Major Applewhite, everybody began the year saying, okay, when's it going to be before Chris Sims takes his place? Applewhite just worked hard, and right now the young freshman, the son of, of course, Phil Sims from Franklin Lakes, New Jersey, stands on the sideline, and what's ironic about all that, these two guys have become friends. Major Applewhite says, I want to help him, and I think it goes to credit to the coaching staff for being honest for both with both Chris and Major. But you need two quarterbacks in college football today, and Texas has got a great luxury now with two quality quarterbacks. Sims just needs some experience. There will be a quarterback battle next year. Mitchell, Painter, touchdown. He has rushed for over 150 yards. He has two catches for 27 yards. And Spike Dykes, his team is in a big hole. Mitchell's eighth rushing touchdown of the year. Stockton to make it a 38-0 game. And he does. Texas using the big offensive line to open up the big holes, and that is why they lead 38-0. Okay. Now the crowd of over 83,000 like what they see so far because they lead 38-0 with 1.42 left to play in the third quarter. Texas all over Texas Tech. He's been having trouble finding something offensively. Ricky Hunter crossing the 30 up to the 32-yard line. And the touchdown once again by Hodges Mitchell. And what you're going to see now, Texas spreads out Texas Tech. And Hodges Mitchell is going to get a little slide draw up inside, takes it. No one touches him because the defense was spread out and he was able to hit the hole. You look at this through the eyes of the safety, number 31, Kevin Curtis, and it's not too pretty because there's too much room on the field for Hodges Mitchell to run. Now Cliff Kingsbury remains in at quarterback. They try the right side of the offensive line. In case you just joined us, Rob Peters was hurt very early in the game. It was a right elbow, but then it, they thought it was a concussion. Sean Rogers was hurt on the last defensive series, but he's moving that left wing pretty good right now, so we would expect him back. But Kingsbury, along with Peters, have taken a pounding tonight. You're going to see... Spike Dykes and Rick Dykes attempt to slow this game down and get out of these last 15 minutes in the fourth quarter as quickly as possible and without putting Cliff Kingsbury in a dangerous situation by trying to ask him to pass too much. The swarming defense of Texas runs Sammy Morris out of bounds, led by Lee Jackson for an injury update on Sean Rogers. Here's Eric. Eric? All right, Ron. Sean Rogers has a left shoulder stinger. As you've seen earlier, he's been moving the wing around pretty good. If it wasn't 38 to nothing, he would be expected to return. But I don't know. They might give him the rest of the night up. Off, rather, with his team up by 38 right now. We have another injury on the field right now. It looks like the house has gone down, so I'll have to run to the other side of the field and update <laughs> you guys on that one. We'll talk in a minute. Working on the leg of Jonathan Gray, the junior out of Lubbock, Texas. Started out his career, he weighed as much as 402 pounds. But you know, he's done a great job of getting his weight down and weight under control. He started 32, second, 32 straight games, and he's just, I think, a guy that's going to go to the National Football League and make a lot of money someday. Well, he fell on Rob Peters earlier, and I think uh, you, I he, think he gets his own man this see time. see him right there. Now, watch what happens to him. He goes, he goes, and number 73, John Despasquale, falls on him. Pes Despasquale gets hit from behind, and he falls on the ankle of Jonathan Gray. Now, Texas Tech has another injury on offense. Shad Williams has a slight knee strain. They're not sure if he's going to be back, and you can see Texas Tech the futility on third down. Kingsbury rifle in the pass. The pass was there, but it was incomplete. D. Jackson didn't wrap it up. Can't fault that guy because he put it on the numbers. And Rick Dykes can only put his head in his hands.
And Rosillas will kick it away again. This will be his seventh punt, Texas yet to kick. And that man has been under great fire in Lubbock, Texas, Spike Banks. There's a lot of people asking him to quit, to retire. But Spike has said he would do nothing and talk, not talk about it until after the last game of the year. And rightly so. And rightly so. Rosillas, another nice spiraling kick. Fair catch is being called for. And it'll be marked at the 45-yard line. And Spike was talking about his players, and they've had suspensions this year. They've had injuries right after their first game. And he said, you know, these kids have been through a heck and a half of Georgia during the season. And we asked him yesterday if he still enjoyed coaching football, and he said absolutely. But, but you know what happens to him, and he said it. You lose to North Texas State 21-14, to but then you come back and you beat Texas A&M. Yeah, you know, you beat Colorado, but you lose to Missouri. So there's been an up and down, inconsistent level of play this year from his Red Raiders, which has caused a lot of criticism to come down on top of him. Right side, Mitchell. A little bit of running room. Well, as we mentioned, Spike says he still enjoys coaching despite all the distractions that have gone on this year for the Red Raiders. The great thing about this game is the fact that that we are around the very best product in the world. That's American young people that are on the way to college and, you know, they're getting an education and uh, they're wholesome and they're, it's just, uh, it, it really is, it, it's fantastic. And I've been very blessed and I always have known that. And it's, it's been a lot of fun, no doubt about it. You know, one thing I remember Spike telling me a couple years ago, he said losing a football game is a terrible thing, but thank goodness they can't skin and eat you, they can just fire you. He goes, so what, I was looking for a job and I got this one. So he keeps everything in perspective on this coaching. You know what? I am not sure you can get a better coach for Texas Tech than Spike Dykes. He's the perfect fit for the Lubbock, Texas school. Uh, we have a break in the action as the third quarter has come to an end. And it's all the Longhorns of Texas. We'll be back. Well, the guys from the fraternities here at UT enjoying themselves. And for good reason, as we head to the fourth quarter, along with Eric Clevens and Artie Gigantino, I'm Ron Thulin. It has been all the Longhorns tonight. They have the football second down and four from the Texas Tech 47. Complete to Nunes, and he is dropped right at the 44-yard line. Major Applewhite, just a sophomore out of Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Jay Barker, former Alabama quarterback, was his hero. You know, and he made a great point talking to Major yesterday that he was a little put off when people assumed that all his success he had last year was because Ricky Williams was behind him. And I think he felt that he didn't get the credit he deserved, and he should have gotten a lot of the credit yeah, last year. Yeah, and he helped Ricky Williams. And if he continues to play like this and Texas continues to win, he's going to be a Heisman Trophy candidate in his junior and senior year. Mitchell, left side, going for the first down. They only needed a yard, and they got that and a couple more. When they need the yardage, they run behind the big side of this offensive line. That's about 700 pounds worth worth of beat on the left side of this Texas offensive line. You take a look at Roger Raisler, 6'5", 315 pounds. He's a preseason All-American. He's going to be an All-Big 8 conference selection. He's an outstanding, excuse me, Big 12 selection. He's an outstanding offensive guard. Mitchell having a big night, dancing through the defense, and he is finally corralled. But not before he picked up a couple of yards. Keith Cockrum again on the tackle. Cockrum has been the most active player defensively for the Red Raiders tonight. A young man with a triple major. How about finance, economic, and management information systems? And right now, Hodges Mitchell's major is in running the football. Over five and a half yards a carry. Texas again putting together a drive. From the 36, Seppel White looking for Flowers. He's got him! Touchdown, Texas! Confidence 
in what he wants to do. Major Applewhite acts and he looks like a seasoned pro underneath the center. It's hard to believe here's a young man that's only been in major college football for two years. And the extra point is blocked. You can return it, but they're not going to get very far. And that was great audio with the official telling Curtis, don't do it, don't even think about it. Great job by our guys in the truck picking up that. Oh, Major Applewhite having a great game. He has passed for yet another touchdown. And the Longhorns lead 44-0. Major Applewhite with three touchdown passes tonight, two to Montreal Flowers, and they lead 44 to nothing. But I think part of the story not only is Major Applewhite, but it's the Texas defense. Absolutely. Texas defense is running around, and they've really increased their speed and their aggression and their blitzing with this defense. That has been the key to Texas success this year, the great defense in which they're doing under Carl Reese. And Texas will kick it away. Chris Stockton again. Had his string of extra points snapped on the block on that last one. From the 10 yard line, Ricky Hunter picking his way up to the 30 to the 31 yard line, and he is going to be dropped right there, and Texas Tech will take over. Texas Tech with only 53 yards on offense tonight on 40 plays. Rushing the football, they have 19 carries for three yards. And Spike Dykes can't wait for this clock, this final 13 minutes, yeah. to go and tick and get out of here. Absolutely. You just don't want to get anybody hurt during this time. This Texas Tech still has a bowl possibility. Texas Tech with minus two yards in the third quarter. Kingsbury trying to get something. Penalty flag is thrown, and he is scrambling for his life. And, Ron, I think that's going to be a holding call because when Kingsbury got out on the corner, the official threw the flag from behind him, I believe, at an offensive lineman for holding. Well, Eric, uh, how about an update on the house injury? Yeah, the house is uh, grounded right now. The foundation pretty messed up. He has a mild sprain of the left ankle. He's getting it iced right now. Trailing 45 nothing. They might not even try to bring him back into this game tonight. 44 nothing. I'm sorry, that extra point was missed. Trailing by that kind of score, I think the house is going to just keep the ice on the ankle. But at least it's a mild sprain, guys. That is good news for Jonathan Gray. Tech quickly up to the line of scrimmage. Three wide receivers to the right. They keep it on the ground. Straight ahead of running the football. Sammy Morris, not much doing again. That has to be so frustrating for not only the running back, but for the offensive line. That they had a, such a good game last week where the players were telling us that it was a confidence booster. They played with a purpose, and then to just get stuff tonight. Well, unfortunately, this year for Texas Tech, they've had a difficult time playing on the road. They've been a much better football team at home and in Lubbock. Kingsbury still has not completed a pass tonight. 0 for 8. On second down and 18. Out in the flat and there's his first completion to Derek Norris, the junior from Hazel, Texas. Been slowed by a hamstring as of late. Hasn't been up to 100%. Greg Brown on the coverage as we take a look at our National Car Rental Game Summary. Hodges Mitchell, 166 yards on 30 carries and a touchdown. Major Apple White, 22 of 34. He's thrown for three TDs. And you can see the total yards right now, 422 to 65. That tells the story right mm -hmm. there. Not only the 44 nothing, but the total yardage. And Kingsbury looks like he's finally getting into a rhythm and getting a little used to playing now. But on third down and one, Texas stands up with Roderick Babers, the true freshman, to stop Sammy Morris. Well, they think he's going to be super, and he's playing super tonight. He was a freshman. He is a freshman out of Houston. He was an all-state performer last year in high school. Only eight first downs for Texas Tech tonight. 
Only one here in the second half. Rosillas' eighth punt of the night. The rush is there. Penalty flag is going to be thrown, and it'll be another personal foul against Texas as Rosillas took a seat again. The quarterbacks have taken a pounding, and the kicker has now taken a pounding. You know, I'm kind of surprised that Mac Brown would go after the punter here in this situation because that can happen unless he wants to just utilize it as a means to practice his punt block. Joe nope. Walker, number 17, bangs in the Rosellas. That was the right call again by the official. And that'll be good for a first down for Texas Tech. So they'll retain possession as the ball is moved up to the 42-yard line with 18 or 10.43 to play here in the ballgame. And Mac Brown talking to the official about it. They run the option with Morris. And he takes a vicious hit again by Lee Jackson, who's had a whale of a ball game. You know, Lee Jackson last year got homesick and wanted to leave the University of Texas. But the coaches, his parents, his friends all talked him into staying here. And he's ended up making the first team and obviously playing very well this evening. But, you know, we all go through those things in our lives, and he just got homesick for a while. Yeah, Chris Sims, the southpaw, the... Freshman out of New Jersey, warming up on the sidelines. We'll get our first look at him this year as the pass goes incomplete, intended for D. Jackson. Now college football continues here on Fox Sports Net. Immediately following our ball game, we send you out west to the Pac-10, where Arizona, Oregon State set to tee it up. Steve Fiziak, Tom Ramsey, and the great James Lofton set to call all the action right here on Fox Sports Net. And as we mentioned earlier, you can see Arizona and Oregon State, they're not afraid to move the football. Well, there was a penalty on that play against Texas Tech. It was declined, so it'll be a third down and eight situation for the Red Raiders. And these fans want more. Here they come on the blitz, and the pass is knocked down. Never had a chance, never got past the line of scrimmage. Anthony Hicks got a piece of it, the senior out of Richardson, Texas, who last year hurt the knee in this ballgame against Tech. And now the Red Raiders will kick it away. One thing you're seeing now for Texas is some of the reserves and some of the backups having an opportunity to play. And a guy like Hicks deserves to play in his last game here in Memorial Stadium. Courtney Garcia standing on his own 20-yard line. Rosilla on his own 30. And the snap is high, but he gets it away, and it's a dandy. Garcia is going to let it go. Stops at the three-yard line, and Texas Tech does a nice job of recovering it at the two-yard line, and that is where it will be marked a 55-yard kick. We'll step aside. When we come back, we'll send it over to Kevin Frazier and Keller Winslow at our College Football Saturday Studios. Just a reminder that Game 3 of our triple header is still ahead. Oregon State and Arizona hooking up from Corvallis. The Beavers have already clinched their first winning season since 1968 and are now bowl eligible. That game kicks off at 10-15 Eastern, 7-15 Pacific. But right now, let's go back to Austin. All right, thank you, Kevin. Good job tonight. You and Keller Winslow as Chris Sims has checked into the lineup for Texas. He's big at 6'5", 210. He's 6 of 11 throwing the football this year. He's already thrown for a couple of touchdowns and hasn't been picked off. Kenny Heider has also checked in. The two freshmen out of Houston, Texas, along with Chris Robertson in the backfield. You know, him such a good-looking young man. Yeah, it looks like Robert Redford, they were saying. But, you know, he, he's got a rocket arm. He moves around. In fact, he moves around better than his father, Phil, did when Phil was playing for the New York Giants. But he's got, a, obviously, a great future here. He's very much like Major Applewhite in terms of the, that he's a student of the game of football. And you've you, you, you got to love a quarterback that's like that. They keep it on the ground. Chris just hands it off. They try the right side, picking up a couple of 
yards, Victor Ike. College football Saturday on Fox Sports Net is brought to you by Subway, the way a sandwich should be. And by the people inspired to build vehicles for your mind and heart, Nissan Driven. Well, I think Major Applewhite and Chris Sims may be locked in a little battle come next year, but I'll tell you, both guys are very, very competitive. They come prepared for the football game. This young man is bright and gifted. Greg Davis said you can put the word exceptional in front of anything you use to describe him. But boy, Major Applewhite's not going to go out without a fight, and I wouldn't assume that this is going to be a done deal. Sims going deep. Pass is incomplete. Off the hands of Brandon Healy, the junior out of Carlsbad, California, but we saw the strength of Sims's arm. Great example of the strength and the rocket ability of Sims's arm. He has a nice touch on the ball, and Healy almost comes down with it. And Texas will be forced to punt for the first time this evening. Ryan Long standing in his own end zone. John Norman set to receive it, standing at his 50. Texas punting from their own end zone, leading 44-0. Norman takes it at the 47-yard line. A kick of 46, none on the return. Along with Hardy Jig and Tito and Eric Clemens, I'm Ron Thulin, welcoming you to Darrell K. Royal Texas Memorial Stadium. Where the Longhorns have put on a defensive show tonight in front of 83,000 people as they lead it 44 0 with just over eight minutes left to play in the football game. And you know, obviously, Texas is going to win this game and they're going to be in the championship game in San Antonio, but it's just amazing when you talk to Mac Brown, he really anticipated having a rebuilding year and would have been happy just to go to any bowl game, let alone a major bowl game. Kingsbury's pass is tipped right at the line of scrimmage by Maurice Gordon, the sophomore out of Mesquite, Texas, got a hand on it, and even the subs are putting pressure on it. And, you know, you talk about his long-range plan, what he had when he took over this job, and he says they are ahead of schedule on it. Yeah, and the long-range plan is to win a national championship. And you talk to these players, and you read the media guide about what their goals are at the University of Texas, and to a man, every player says to win a national championship. And I think that's great because you've got a great chemistry right now on this Longhorn team. Kingsbury's pass is complete inside the 50 down to the 48-yard line. Rudy Renda, the senior out of Keller, Texas, that is his third reception of the year. He's a fullback. And Spike also getting some guys some playing time, which is good. But you know, one side of the field, they're talking about national championships. The other side of the field, there are so many question marks that will not be answered until their final game and maybe long after that. But one thing is for sure, the young men of Texas Tech play hard. Spike Dykes only can show the frustration tonight. Third down and three. That pass never had a chance. And you know, people might be wondering why Texas is continuing to blitz Texas Tech. Well, the reason is, that's what they do. They don't play zone defenses. They don't play base defenses. They are a pressure defensive unit, and they pressure in all situations with the first team, with the second team, and with the third team. They do what they do, so to speak. And that's why you're seeing, even though they've got a large lead, then still continue to blitz Texas Tech. Well, on fourth down, Texas Tech is probably going to go, go for it, but they're going to call a timeout before that. Well, one of the big stars tonight has been Hodges Mitchell, over 160 yards rushing the football. For more on Hodges, here's Eric Clemens. Well, guys, you know, Hodges Mitchell was taken under the wing of Heisman Trophy winner Ricky Williams last year and really looked up to Ricky the last couple of years, so much so that early this year he tried to emulate Ricky's running style. A problem, 5'7", 190, you're not going to run over and through too many people like Ricky Williams did over the past few years. So after game three, the coaches pulled this guy aside and told him, hey, be yourself, be that elusive, shifty-footed runner that you're normally being. And since week four, he's averaging over 137 yards rushing a game and in his own right is a major 
major force in this Texas offense. Guys? Absolutely. And the good news is for Texas fans, he's back next year. Yeah. And on fourth down and three, the Red Raiders are going to go for it. In the eye formation. Straight ahead, running the football, and they have a first down with Sammy Morris. Lee Jackson was there to finally bring him down, but not before they got the first down. And even trailing 44 nothing, they're still putting the next down and bowing the next. They always play hard, and power football and the gap play and the power play have been a trademark of a Spike Dykes offensive football team. And they haven't been able to get it unleashed tonight, but they certainly came into the game and tried to do it. On first and ten, Kingsbury with two completions, looking for number three, hit as he throws, and it will be incomplete. He dodged the first one, didn't dodge the second one, and that is the eighth quarterback pressure on the night by the Texas defense. J.J. Kelly, the junior out of Brenham, Texas, is the one who is putting on the pressure this time. I'd like to welcome those of you who have been watching a little bit of NBA basketball with the Detroit Pistons and the Seattle Sonics. We are in Austin, Texas for Big 12 football at Texas Memorial Stadium along with Hardy Gigantino and Eric Clemens. I'm Ron Thulin as the Texas Longhorns on the verge of clinching the Big 12 South title and earning a trip to the championship game for the Big 12 the first week of December in San Antonio. They needed to win this game and they are doing it convincingly. They've done it with defense as they have been able to stuff Texas Tech, holding them to just 86 total yards, but they've racked up over 400, and that's been the story. They've knocked out one Texas Tech quarterback, and that man, Cliff Kingsbury, the redshirt freshman, he's been running for his life since he replaced Rob Peters. And Applewhite, Major Applewhite of Texas, three touchdown passes tonight, throwing for over 240 yards, and he's taking a seat, having a rest, and enjoying it. Pass is complete to D. Jackson. Pass complete to number 85, D. Jackson. You know, you start to look at this as this Big 12 championship game is going to unfold. In all probability, it'll be Nebraska against Texas. And that's interesting because Texas has beaten Nebraska now three times in a row, and obviously once this year. That will be a major challenge for Max Brown and Major Applewhite to come back and beat Nebraska right. again. It ought to be one great game, but Nebraska has got the motivational edge in that game because they've lost three times in a row. Kansas State is still not out of it. They need some help, obviously, from the Buffaloes right. of Colorado and Gary Barnett. Penalty Get flag is thrown. Illegal substitution. 12 man breaking the huddle. You know, we've got a second. We'd like to thank the sports information departments of both schools, Kent Partridge, Chris Cook, and Tammy Hoffman from Texas Tech, and, of course, Bill Little, John Bianco, the guys at Texas who put on quite a spread up here and really take care of us. And, folks, we do thank you. Now the executive producers of Fox Sports Net are Arthur Smith and Bill Morrison. Coordinating producer of College Football Saturday is Roy Hamilton. Today's game produced by Mike Helling and directed by Ken Fouts. College Football Saturday studio show was produced by Loy Maxson, directed by Joe Whitus, and the vice president of field operations is Andrea Jenkins. Thanks to all our folks and our spotter and stat guy, Sammy Polis, who makes us look good every week. You know, we, we, we were talking before about Spike Dykes, and the rumors will fly in Lubbock this week, especially after the type of game this was. I think if you lose the game and, you you know, it's a close game, you know, you, you know people say, hey, you went and played good, but you lose 44 to nothing, boy, the rumors will swirl oh, yeah. in Lubbock. And that's really unfortunate. It really is. You know, the day of the media where... You know, you just kind of let things happen, but now it's with talk shows and especially the Internet that's just becoming, a, at times, a cesspool for rumors. It's unfortunate that a man with the integrity of Spike Dykes has to put up with that garbage. Kingsbury's pass is complete to Baker. 
And he is inside the red zone for the Red Raiders. Pick up a 32 on the play. And Texas comes on a blitz, and Big Tim Baker is in the slot in a four-wide receiver set, and he just gets inside and makes the play going down the field. A little hope for the big play finally for this yep. Tech offense tonight. Well, they have their first real scoring opportunity of the evening with just over six and a half to play. Nobody has left the stadium. Kingsbury looking for six. Doesn't get it. Tipped away at the last second. Greg Brown got a hand on it. It was intended for Baker again. And one of the matchups in this game that we felt Tech had an advantage in was the size of guys like Baker. Six foot five, 200 pounds over the corners and the safeties of Texas. But because of the pressure applied by Texas up front, they haven't had the time to get the ball to their big receivers. Second down and 10 from the 13. The option to Morris. Inside the 10 to the 5. Looking for touchdown, Texas Tech. Great effort by Sammy Morris. His third rushing touchdown of the year. Put it down for 13 yards. Kingsbury on the option to the, the left of the screen. Sees Arn's jerseys. Dishes the ball off right away to Sammy Morris. Morris makes a great cut and keeps running the football until he gets in the end zone. That's all on the runner right there. Number five, Sammy Morris. Well, they get off the schneid with the touchdown and the extra point. Still to come. Chris Burkholz will attempt the extra point. Perfect this year. 26 for 26. And with 6.23 to play, Texas Tech has their first points of the ball game. 44 to 7. The Longhorns still on top. The big play, of course, the pass from Kingsbury to Tim Baker. It's covered 32 yards. You know, I, I, you know th th this is a momentum type game, but one of the real key plays in this game was an interception early in the game by number 24, Greg Brown. Excuse me, 23, Lee Jackson. The ball gets tipped up right into his hands, and he goes and scores. It was at a key play in this game. So Texas will come back on the field, leading 44 to 7. But you know, coaches, and we've been around them long enough to realize that even though you're up 44, they're mad they gave up a touchdown. Well, you know who's mad is is, is Coach Reese, the defensive yeah. coordinator. And the reason is that there's something special about a shutout. And old Coach Reese, he's sitting right here. He's saying, gee, our first guys, they did a great job, but our second guys went in and gave up a touchdown. Defensive coaches cling to stats and shutouts and keeping teams under 100 yards total offense are stats that defensive coaches cling to. Carl Reese, college teammate of Gary Barnett, 33 years of coaching experience, 27 years as a defensive coordinator. Had some great years when he was at LSU, and that was one of the first hires that Mac Brown made. And you know what? This is his 12th job, his 12th coaching job in college. The onside kick, we have a penalty flag thrown, though, right when the kick took place. We have two penalty flags now, one at 140 and one at the other. Not sure what the first penalty flag was for. Second one was probably because the ball went out of bounds. And anybody wearing a striped stripe shirt is invited to that party. Offside. Kicking team. Penalties declined. Kick out of bounds. By rule. Texas will take the ball on the 40 yard line. First down. Well, Spike tried it once before. It didn't work. Tried it again. It didn't work again. He had a man there, and it looked like it had a shot at being successful. I, I still think 
onside kicks are so much better on artificial surfaces because they bounce better. Mm -hmm. It's a little tough on this great surface here because it's not a hard surface. Sims straight back, rifle in the pass, complete to Flowers. They're saying his knee did hit the ground. Montreal Flowers out of Dallas, Texas, who was a running back in high school. Pickup of 18 on the play. I don't think his knee touched the ground, Artie. You know, the officials are almost always right, and you know what? Oh, there it is. He's down. They are absolutely correct on his he was knee. Getting was up. Down. He was getting up. Boy, he's got some moves. He's got some balance. Well, he does. Well, once again, we're seeing the young, the young arm of the young Chris Sims. Flowers, five catches. He's gone over the century mark in receiving yards. Sims back, firing away. Pass is complete up to the 33-yard line. And again, it is Montreal Flowers. You know, you take a look at Chris Sims, and you watch his throwing form. He drops back. He's big. He's six foot five. He can see down the field. He looks at the ball. He looks at his receiver. He brings the arm up. That's some nice form right there. And that ball comes off of his arm with a great velocity. He reminds me of that old Chicago Bear quarterback, Bobby Douglas. Big, strong guy, a lefty that can throw the ball down the field. This time they keep it on the ground, running straight ahead inside the 25 down to the 23-yard line. Now, you know, a situation like this is great practice for, for, for a young quarterback like Chris Sims. Get him involved in a pressure quote situation in front of 80,000 people here and, you know, get the tempo and the feel of the game. Obviously, you don't get that in practice. Six receivers have caught passes tonight for the Longhorns. DeVille leading the way with nine receptions. Flowers has six. Nunez had three. They keep it on the ground. And Victor Wright, a much heralded running back out of Austin, Texas, that they thought was going to AM or Colorado, but Mac convinced him to stay in his hometown of Austin. Number two. Well, get all the football news, highlights, and analysis you can handle as we bring you in depth pro, college, and even high school pigskin coverage. It's weeknights at 6 p.m. on Fox Sports Net. Check your local listings. And Victor Ike, a good-looking running back who's been injured. And they are glad to have him back in the backfield. Bowie High School here in Austin. First and ten from the 22. Sims. Pass is complete. Again to Flowers. Already with a couple of touchdown catches, working on Brian Giddens on that left quarterback spot. That'll be the next bendy combination in the Big 12 here. Sims to Flowers. There's no question where he's looking. He puts the ball right back on the money. Flowers goes up. Does a good job of catching the ball, bringing the ball down inside. Now Flowers with seven receptions for 130 yards. And you have to be maybe a little surprised that Texas is throwing the football well, with this big lead. They're training Chris Sims, Ron. That's what they're doing here. They're giving him some feel for playing the game in pressure. Kenny Hyder just banging away straight ahead. The 5'11", 217-pound freshman out of Houston. Hyder got some playing time when Victor Ike was injured. Youngsters seeing some action. Chad Stevens, a tight end, comes into the ball game now for the Longhorns. Clock ticking inside of four minutes to play. Can't move fast enough for Spike Dykes. The numbers on Hyder this season. Second and goal from the two. This time the tech defense up to the challenge led by Kyle Shipley from that inside linebacker spot. Not a very flashy player. Just doing the job. Young Lyman now playing for Texas. Spike Dykes as he looks on. He's, this might be the last time Spike Dyke comes and coaches a football yep. team at this field in Austin. You can see 14 in the second, 17 in the third for Texas. Those have been the big quarters. On third and goal. Touchdown, Texas victory.
Oh, Chris Sims engineering that drive. Eight plays, 60 yards, and just over three minutes. And Texas putting a spanking on Texas Tech tonight. The extra point by Stockton is good. 301 to play, and the Longhorns are on their way to San Antonio December 4th for the Big 12 championship game. The Texas Longhorns will step a two-game losing streak to the Red Raiders of Texas Tech as they lead it 51-7 in that number 10 ranking. They will go inside of that, obviously, when the new rankings are announced tomorrow for Mac Brown. And this is beyond his wildest imagination to think that this team this year, this young, with so many different changes and injuries, that they would be inside the top 10. Well-deserved credit to the kids. Fumble, Texas has it. Oh, my goodness, and we do have a penalty flag thrown at the 20. When it rains, it pours. Mitchell does it all. There's a flag on the play. Well, Texas will take over on the 18-yard line. First down for the Longhorns. The range of emotions he has gone through this year. Robert at quarterback, number 15. A new quarterback for Texas. Jeff Baker. Number 33, Kenny Hunter on the carry. Well, Texas Tech had a game plan coming into the game. This is what it was. And, you know, and we, we talked about it. They had to protect their quarterback. Obviously, that did not happen tonight. They had to keep moving the chains and get first down. That did not happen. And they had to pressure Major Applewhite, and that did not happen. So from a game plan standpoint, the three things Tech had to do to win this game, at least in our, in our opinion, didn't work out. Well, Texas playing their fourth quarterback, getting some players some playing time. Willingham is now in at quarterback, number nine. So they're just going to alternate quarterbacks and get some guys in that aren't even on the depth chart. Now Robert Coy is going into the ball game, and Willingham got a play, and that's something that young man's always going to remember. He can tell his grandchildren that he played quarterback for the University of Texas. And he was part of a 51-7 win over Texas Tech. Straight ahead. Touchdown, Texas. Kenny Hyder. His first collegiate rushing touchdown. Just keep piling it on. Stockton's not even going to kick the extra point. This is Jeff Baker. Left-footed kicker. His first point after. Gets a little bit of smile as Texas leads 58-7, to 7, 141. Still yet to run off the clock. 58 to 7 the score the number 10 team in the country the Texas Longhorns have piled it on Texas Tech with 141 to play in the ball game and it has been all the Texas defense they have taken advantage of every opportunity Tech has given them Tech losing Rob Peters the quarterback Shad Williams also injured in the ball game neither one expected to be serious injuries but you're taking a lot of firepower out of the ball game Coming up next for most of you, the Arizona Wildcats and the Oregon State Beavers, Pac-10 football. Standing by, there's Mac Rogers, Bill Little, the longtime SID here on the left, who's been a legend in the old Southwest Conference, now in the Big 12. 
he's a Daryl Royal of sports information. He is, isn't he? Yeah, he's just been here and a great guy, and everybody knows him, and everybody at the University of Texas loves him. He says he cries after the wins and he cries after the losses. He goes, you guys probably think I'm a crybaby. Now we think he just loves your school, Bill. Nothing wrong with that. Number 12, Ricky Hunter. Ricky Hunter has gotten a lot of work kick, taking kickoffs tonight. He goes up to the 25-yard line, and Texas Tech will take over. You know, Ron, the one thing that's going to happen, though, that next year going into the season, no matter what happens for Texas at the end of this year, the bowl game, the championship game, the A&M game, people are going to have them penciled in as a potential national champion next year. And it'll be interesting because the Big 12 Conference should be super. Kansas State. Colorado coming back, Nebraska, wow, did a great conference. Well, Cliff, Cliff Kingsbury just got an incredible hit again on him. He has taken a pounding right as he let go of that football. It'll be interesting to see how Texas responds when they have the big bullseye on their back when next year comes underway because the expectations will be very, very high. Not so much in the outside world for that man, but right here in the state of Texas. The fever has begun. And they're going to have to rise to a whole new set of challenges come next season. But when he took the job, he knew what the deal was. You know, we talked about that with him yesterday. He was telling you, that's part of the deal when you take the University of Texas head coaching job. And you got to embrace, like he's done with the alums and the media, you have to embrace the expectations. You cannot allow the expectations to get to you. Take them and for what they're worth. And this guy does it. We talked about a great fit at Texas Tech. I think all three Texas schools. A&M's got a great fit with Archie Slocum. Texas has got a great fit with Mac Brown. Absolutely. He has embraced the fans, and the fans have embraced him. Third down and seven for Tech. Pass is complete. Running room to spare. King Scoble, the redshirt freshman out of Dallas, whose grandfather Field Scoble, synonymous with the Cotton Bowl. Pickup of 23 on the play, a very famous name in Cotton Bowl history. King's brother also played at Texas Tech a couple of years back. That's a first down for the Red Raiders. Clock inside of 40 seconds. That is Scoble's third catch on the season. Look out. Kingsbury is going to be rocked. He fumbles. Ball is loose. Tech recovers it. Aaron Babineau is the one who hit him first. Ball popped loose, but they were able to recover it. The perfect example of a backside rusher knocking the ball out of the quarterback's hands. And that's going to do it. Texas will be going to San Antonio the first week of December for the Big 12 championship game against either Nebraska or Kansas State. They have clinched at least a share of the Big 12 South title with a convincing 58-7 victory over Tech. Artie, that was a great defensive game for Texas. Texas's defense was dominant, but, but needless to say tonight. Major Applewhite obviously engineers this offense. So that's it from Austin, Texas, for the final score is Texas 58, Texas Tech 7. Up next on Fox Sports Net, a Pac-10 battle between Arizona and Oregon State. For Artie Gigantino and Eric Clemens, I'm Ron Thulin. College football Saturday has been a presentation of Fox Sports Net.